eye screening location near you. The Awareness of Macular Diseases Week was started and led by the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at Kutepua Hospital since 2005. The key objective of this campaign is to raise awareness of macular diseases, including age-related macular degeneration, diabetic macular disease, myopic macular degeneration, etc. Even though macular degeneration has become the third leading cause of blindness in Singapore, with increasing aging population, many people in the community are unaware of this group of diseases impeding and delaying care seeking. Through our continuous efforts, we hope the public will learn to recognize the importance of early diagnosis and treatment of macular diseases to help them maintain good vision and enjoy a better quality of life. 2020, the world has faced with a global threat, COVID-19 pandemic, which has jolted the daily lives of many. Due to the fear of catching COVID, a delay in seeking medical care, including eye care, is not uncommonly seen after we emerge from the crisis and the slowly return to norms. A delay in treating macular disease can cause irreversible blindness. Therefore, awareness of macular disease symptoms becomes even more important during this special period. When you want to avoid a necessary trip to the hospital, at the same time, not to miss any vision threatening conditions. This year's launching event is moved to online platform due to the COVID with the theme of better vision, better function, better life. Although we are unable to meet you physically, trust me, the excitement of the program we prepare for you is not anything less. We've lined up a great program for you and hope to educate everyone about more than just the existence of macular disease. Today, you will hear from a highly experienced retinal specialist, primary eye care providers, patients living with macular diseases, and much more. There will even be a live cooking show and a grocery tour. Today, we are very privileged to have us, Professor Pang Wing San, to grace the opening ceremony of AMD Week 2020. Good morning, everyone. Hello, Professor, Professor Yip, Jiu, Senior Consultant Head, Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences at Kutik Port Hospital and ADMC, Associate Prof. Tan Kok Yang, Deputy Chairman, Medical Board, Yishun Health, Professor Lim Tok Han, Senior Consultant, Energy Institute, Tan Tok Seng Hospital, Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, morning to you all. I'm honored to join you today at the Awareness of Macular Diseases Week 2020. This is the 16th year of the event. I can still recall the first time we held this event many years ago, when we were still in Alexandra Hospital. Macular diseases were not so well known to the public then. And Associate Prof. Aoyong Ka Guan, and Head of the Pharmacology and Visual Sciences Department, proposed this for public education. Since then, the department has consistently sustained this program every year. Despite the restrictions of COVID-19, I'm pleased that we can still do this as a virtual, in fact, nationwide event. Our aim is to promote awareness of diseases affecting the macula, which is a central area of the retina. You'll hear more about it later. Many may not be aware that macular disease, or EMD, is in fact the third leading cause of blindness worldwide. Both diabetes and high myopia can contribute to macular disease. Recognition of early EMD symptoms, changing a lifestyle, and regular participation in eye screening and early treatment can potentially prevent blindness. Yishun Health has always emphasized the importance of educating seniors, caregivers, and the general public on macular diseases and its impact on vision. In support of AMD Week, Yishun Health and its partners will be providing eye screening for age-related diseases at touch points such as hospitals, community centers, and optical outlets as well. Now, during this period of COVID-19, we understand that quarantine, isolation, has resulted in people neglecting their health, and many elderly, especially vulnerable seniors. It's important to know your health condition, detect problems early, and seek timely treatment to lower the risk of complications. Certainly important to go for health screening, not just eye screening. 
In closing, we hope to raise awareness of various macular diseases in Singapore. Do let us continue to work together to find ways for each of us to age healthily and happily. I would like to thank again the organizing committee for putting together an enriching program. And I wish all of you a fruitful and enjoyable event today. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Prof Fong. In this very special year, we wish everyone to stay safe and strong. In addition, we also hope everyone to be more wary of your own health issues, including eye health, so that you can get timely treatment without any unnecessary delay, just like what Prof Fong has mentioned the importance of uh, raising your awareness of macular diseases so that you could enjoy a better life. That exactly is the theme of our event this year. Now, I would I also like to invite Prof Ip Chi Chu uh, to uh, head of Kute Park Hospital's Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences to deliver his welcome address. Prof Ip, please. Hi, good morning. Professor Pang Wing San, Deputy Group CEO, Population Health, National Healthcare Group, Associate Professor Tan Kok Yang, Deputy Chairman Medical Board, Yishun Health, Professor Lim Tok Han, Senior Consultant, NHGI Institute at Tan Tok Sing Hospital, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It is my pleasure to welcome you to the launch of the Awareness of Macular Disease Week 2020. Today marks the 16th anniversary of this nationwide initiative since its inception by the Department of Ophthalmology and Visual Sciences in Alexandra Hospital, and subsequently now in Ku Teck Wat Hospital. Since 2005, Ku Teck Wat Hospital has organized the age-related macular degen degeneration week yearly. Although we are highly concerned about the diseases among our seniors, the scope of the event has expanded in recent years to include all diseases that affect the macula, macula such as diabetic maculopathy, and not just age-related causes. When we first launched the AMD Awareness Week in 2005, we envisaged this initiative to bring eye care partners from various private and public sectors together to raise the profile of AMD, which at that time was not widely known. As the years pass by, more partners have come on board to work with KTPH on this annual awareness campaign. Our focus is to provide eye screening to members of the public aged 50 and above. Today, I'm happy to announce that we have more than 20 eye care partners comprising of restructured hospitals, other government institutions, schools, non-profit organizations and associations, and over 100 private eye clinics and optical shops, all bending together for this meaningful cause. I would like to extend my deepest appreciation to all our partners who have been with us on this journey over the years. The achievement and progress we have made in creating greater awareness of macular diseases would not have been possible without your invaluable support and participation. From the 5th to the 12th December this year, starting from the launch today, our eye care partners will be offering eye screenings for seniors aged 50 and above. A series of public education forums will also be taking place from now until the 12th of December. Besides going to the nearest eye screening partner in the community, seniors can also perform regular self-screening at home. This can be done through the use of our MATA, which is the Macular Amsler Testing App, which is a mobile device application with a built-in education link for those with early stages of AMD. This is a useful app that can be downloaded free of charge through both App Store and Google Play. With that, I encourage everyone to take this opportunity to learn more about macular disease and do your own self-checking if necessary. On behalf of the organizing committee for this event, I thank you once again for helping us to achieve this milestone of 16 years. Let's continue working together to tackle and fight these eye diseases. Thank you very much. Thank you, Prof. Thank you, Prof, for your very welcome address to everyone. And uh, thanks again, Prof Fang. Okay, so now I know for sure you don't want to be kept waiting. So we are going to commence the start of AMD Week 2020. I would like to invite here at this virtual stage, Professor Pang Wang-san, 
Associate Professor Tan Kok Yan, Professor Lim Tok Han, Adjunct Associate Professor Ip Chi Chu, Dr. Benjamin Chang Chong Ming, Dr. Lega Kapao, Dr. Yeo Chong Hang, and myself, Organizing Chairman of the AMD Week 2020. To take a group photo in a very special way, Zoom Wi-Fi, yeah, it's a special way in this year 2020. So everyone, one, two, three, cheers. Okay, the photo is done, yeah. <laughs> it's a very nice photo, I guarantee you. We will be commencing the AMD launch through this virtual platform. Without further ado, let's just uh, put our hands together to initiate AMD 2020. Hello everyone, with that, this year's campaign is now in two years to kick off and I would like us to share with all of our audience the highlights of the AMD week. First of all, we have over 130 ice cleaning locations island, island wide. Please visit www.ph.com.sg for more details on the ice cleaning location near you. Secondly, there will also be online public forum provided by KTPH. Tanto Singh, NUH, and the SNEC during the AMD week from 5th December to 12th December. Gentle reminder, the public forum provided by KTPH is at the end of today's program at 11 a.m. And the talk will be uh, given in four official languages. For those who have not registered, it's not too late. Okay, you still have time to register. Please uh, follow our website and uh, get your chance to ask questions to our specialists. Last but not least, we have a, an exciting lineup of programs today. So sit back, relax, and enjoy yourselves. As today celebrates the 16th year of AMD Week, I would like to say the past 15 fruitful years of our campaigns would not have been possible without each and uh, everyone's efforts. Therefore, we would like to take this opportunity to thank all of our partners and the sponsors' constant support, and also our public's cooperation and interests. So now, Let's go on a little bit of a time travel to have a glimpse of how AMD Week event was carried out for the past 15 years. Oh, what a rich history. Looking back to the past really makes us look forward to the future. And I, we've seen so many wonderful photos and even the younger faces of our professors. Yeah, so that even reminds us that this event really has a great history. We will continue to carry on the legacy of the event and make the event more and more exciting. Thank you to all of our partners who have been supportive all these years. Okay, now let's move on to the Eye and Vision Health Awards 2020. 
The Eye and Vision Health Awards are given to recipients whose achievements and contributions have significantly improved eye care in their respective institutions or within Singapore. Their achievement is not just limited in their own field of expertise, they are also exemplary spirit of public service through involvement in community, welfare and the civic activities. The recipients are chosen by a special committee made up of eye care professionals. Associate Professor Ichi Chu, the head of Department of KTPH Ophthalmology and the Visual Sciences, will be virtually presenting the award to our awardees in a very special way. Please look forward. So now we are pleased to award the following deserving eye care professional. First, Lifetime Achievement Award, Dr. Ko Lian Hui. Next. Lifetime Achievement Award to Miss Siu Ka Ling. Look at the smiley face when they received the award. Congrats. Next. Distinguished Service Award, Dr. Dan Wai Yu. Beautiful. Distinguished Service Award, Ms. Vivian Chan. Congrats. Young Eye Care Ambassador, Dr. Wong Chi Wai. Young Eye Care Ambassador, Ms. Chua Si Chi. Next. Corporate Social Responsibility Award to Esselo Vision Foundation, ASEAN. Next. Corporate Social Responsibility Award to Johnson & Johnson Vision Care. Congratulations to all the recipients of the Eye Vision and Health Award. Truly, each of you has been an inspiration to all of us, okay, to all the eye care professionals. Let's give them a big round of applause. Ladies and gentlemen, long-awaited excitement shall begin now. We will now move on to our live Q&A session with uh, Professor Lin Tok Han. Professor Lin Tok Han is a senior consultant and virtual retinal specialist at the National Healthcare Group Eye Institute, Tan Tok Sing Hospital. Professor Lin is also the immediate past deputy group CEO, education and research of National Health Care Group, Singapore. His clinical and research interests are age-related macular degeneration and the polypoidal choroidal vasculopathy. Good morning, Professor Lim. Good morning, Professor Lim. Uh, are you here? Uh, yes. Uh, I just unmuted my uh, device. Yeah, very grateful to uh, have this opportunity to participate and to receive this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Lin. Thank you. Hope you have uh, enjoyed so far. A very welcome, a warm welcome on behalf of our team. Uh, thanks a lot for being here with us. So actually earlier on, we have uh, gathered uh, some questions from our public, uh, which they want to know about macular diseases from the eye care expert. Uh. Actually, we have received a very uh, overwhelming response. But however, in the interest of time, we only can select this many questions. Okay, let's just uh, start with the questions. So the first question is coming from uh, this patient. Uh, he or she wants to ask you, what is the early symptom of AMD and uh, how do they know uh, whether they have AMD or not? Prof Lim, thanks. Uh, in the age-rated macular degeneration, uh, the earliest symptom is uh, distortion of vision. As you see that uh, in the diagram up here, um, there's this square chart and if you look at the square chart on the right side, uh, there is a depiction of a distortion of straight lines. This often time is uh, the first presentation of macular condition. Uh, macular being the central part of the retina where a person see sharp vision. Um, when there is distortion, it usually indicates that the seat of the problem is at the central part of the retina, known as the macula. Mm. Um, of course, there are other symptoms, including a uh, uh, sort of patch of obstruction. This is what we call scotoma. The patch of obstruction is also a common symptom uh, for a person with macular condition. Um, that's opposed to uh, just uh, generalized blood vision. Yeah. 
So uh, generalized bird vision sometimes can also be the cause of age-related macular degeneration, but uh, could be due to a whole host of other conditions. So these are the three main symptoms of uh, age-related macular degeneration. Okay. Of course, uh, many, many patients with the earlier stages of AMD would not have uh, any symptom at all. Um, that's because the early stages uh, itself uh, increase over many years without us even knowing it. Thereby, uh, there's an important part of uh, receiving eye check uh, if a person crosses the age of about 50. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Lim. Yeah, so now we know some uh, specific signs that uh, which indicate that you might have early symptoms of AMD and also uh, Prof. Lim once again addressed to us the importance of uh, early screening, okay, so that uh, you will know that you have early AMD, then you can start some uh, preventive measure. Okay, let's uh, come to the next question. The second question, oh, looks like this patient knows quite a bit about AMD actually. Yeah, the question is quite specific. Uh, what is wet and dry AMD? How do we treat wet and dry AMD? And can AMD actually be cured? Thanks, Prof. Lim. So, uh, person having a treated macular generation usually started with poor blood supply of this central zone of our retina. This central zone, because it is uh, metabolically very active, um, it, it is very hungry for oxygen and nutrients. As you may know, the uh, central part of our retina uh, sees or perceive, uh, help us perceive vision uh, 24 by 7, other than the time when we sleep. And therefore, it uh, requires a lot of energy so that the photoreceptor can function well. Now, as we age, this blood supply to the photoreceptor uh, slowly diminishes. And at a certain point in time, you'll find that the, uh, the cells no longer function properly. So one problem then uh, is that the, uh, the, some cells will undergo degeneration due to loss of blood supply. And the second, uh, the second problem related to it is that abnormal blood vessel may sprout in order to replenish some of the blood supply. Uh, when the new vessel, uh, blood vessel grow, these blood vessels are fragile and oftentimes leak or bleed or both. So if you look at the picture in the top, uh, bottom left, that's when abnormal blood vessel grow and then it bleed and it leak severely causing sudden loss of the central vision. That is so-called wet AMD because of leakage. In the top left corner, this is where the so-called dry AMD. This is when the cell slowly loses its function. And uh, this condition is known as geographic atrophy. Now, there are, of course, early stages that you can pick up this condition with. In the top right corner, you will see those yellow dots and those yellow dots are actually early precursor lesion of uh, age related macular degeneration known as drusen. Uh, these are early stages of dry AMD. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Lim. That is, uh, that is really a very detailed explanation. Okay, I hope our patient has uh, learned something. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. Oh, this patient. Um, his or father has uh, AMD and uh, he wants to ask, is AMD hereditary? And uh, who are actually at high risk of uh, AMD? Thanks, Prof. Lim. So AMD is typically not taken as an hereditary condition, but it does have uh, some genetic basis. Now the genetic basis in the Western world, in the Caucasian population, uh, is much stronger. Uh, the typical uh, genes uh, that the person uh, that predispose, predispose the person to AMD is called the CFH gene. Uh, in the Western world, it increased the risk by uh, about 1.5 fold. Uh, in the Asian world, it seemed to increase at a slightly lower uh, rate. It's at about 1.2 times the risk of so-called another person who does not have a CFH gene. 
Um, so it is typically not taken as hereditary in the sense that uh, the normal hereditary condition is that your offspring is has got fifty percent chance of getting it or hundred percent chance of getting it. Mm -hmm. So that's uh, typically what we mean by hereditary condition. Whereas for age return max degeneration, the genetic uh, component is much less, but nevertheless important. Now, whether uh, uh, a person having uh, age related migration uh, should alert the uh, offspring the, or direct relatives to go for eye check. Uh, at this moment, the evidence is uh, not so clear in the Asian world. Uh, in the Western world, there is increasing uh, emphasis to uh, say that, okay, if you have AMD and your, uh, your children is about 1.5 times higher uh, the, than the and another person who doesn't, then maybe you should go for early check. Thank you, thank you, Prof. Lin. Uh, uh, sorry, I didn't answer the second question. Who are at higher risk of uh, age related no, sure. degeneration? Uh, the second uh, risk of uh, uh, the quite important part of the uh, uh, risk of age related degeneration come from lifestyle. The top lifestyle factor is actually smoking. Now, smokers actually have about 300 to 500 percent increased risk as opposed to just now we mentioned about 1.2 times. Um, that, that is a big uh, so called uh, modifiable risk factor for those who are smokers. Um, and if a smoker has AMD, oftentimes it's worse and it's much harder to treat. So, if there's one the take home message uh, for uh, maintenance of macular health to the uh, participant today is that the, if you have any friend who are smoking at this moment, please, please tell them that smoking uh, causes blindness. Um, it's not just uh, heart attack, cancer, but also blindness. So, uh, you can help them by just stating this fact that you are three times higher, at higher risk of uh, contracting age-related macular degeneration if you smoke. Um, and if you're a smoker, it's never too late to give up smoking. The second point is going to do with diet. Now, the evidence of diet is a bit more patchy, but in general, uh, patients who have uh, so-called healthy diets of uh, green uh, leafy vegetable with fruits, uh, fish uh, intake versus the people who take uh, a lot of uh, red meat, um, then the people who eat vegetable, fruits, and fish uh, tend to have lower risk of uh, AMD or age related macular degeneration. But uh, the evidence is a bit more patchy. Then uh, there are, of course, uh, people who say that, oh, then should we uh, supplement our diet with vitamin? Um, high dose vitamin has been shown to protect patients from uh, progressing to severe AMD if you have the intermediate stage of AMD. Now, if you don't have that intermediate stage of AMD, that means either no AMD or, or very mild AMD, then vitamin has not been shown to be useful or protective. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, Prof Lim. Yeah, I hope hearing from Prof Lim, this patient will be less worried. Okay, so maybe now you should focus on more of uh, lifestyle modification uh, instead, uh, instead of uh, worrying too much about uh, your parents having AMD. Okay, yeah, so uh, next move to the next questions. Okay, so this is a different type of um, macular disease. Uh, this patient is very short-sighted and uh, she was uh, told that the macular is not very healthy by the ophthalmologist. So uh, he or she wants to ask you, how does the high myope actually affect the macula? Yeah, for uh, high myopia, uh, very important is Singapore is actually the myopic uh, capital, or one of the myopia capital of the whole world. Um, we have the, uh, the reputation of uh, having uh, one of the highest prevalence of myopia and effect of high myopia. <laughs> Um, as you know that uh, when we say a person having high myopia, actually in the literature, it actually you know, it means at 600 degrees and above, and that's considered high myopia. Of course, many conditions that you saw, uh, that you see on the picture and the right uh, occur in patients with uh, well over a thousand degrees. So, um, suffice it to say that 
when the person have high myopia or 600 degree and above, increasingly there are uh, conditions that can affect the eye, uh, ranging from uh, what we call vitreal macular interface syndrome. Uh, that is the picture of the bottom left. The bottom left is a picture of a cross-section scan of the macula. So uh, the, the, on the right, you see the uh, macula, a picture of macula with the central blood spot there. Uh, if you take a cross-section, uh, it... the bottom left, you see the bottom left shows that there's some gel, a V-shaped gel traction of on the macula the, from the, uh, from the uh, red, but this is separate completely uh, because of high myopia. Then there's a layer of gel that gets stuck on the macula and exerts Forces and this vision or even detachment so in the disease nature to AMD, but the causation is myopia, meaning abnormal blood vessel grow through certain layers uh, and then cause bleeding or leakage of both. Uh, that is in the picture on the right side. Uh, there are, uh, uh, of course, other conditions that can affect the eye. Uh, in the macula, when the person has uh, myopic macular degeneration, and that is uh, also very similar to AMD, but uh, occur in a um, very low. and progressive manner, and it is in the atrophy or myopic macular degeneration, yeah. shape white uh, lesion just below the blood spot, and that's chorio retina atrophy, and that can also affect vision. Thank you. Thank you, Prof Lim. Yeah, thank you. I have to admit, actually, I myself also one of the victims of a high myopia. <laughs> Today, I'm actually wearing contact lens. Yeah, uh, I usually wear very thick glasses in my clinic. Yeah, I also learned quite a bit from you today. Okay, I believe our audience also. Yeah, so uh, next question, move on to, oh, uh, also another type of a, uh, another type of macular disease. Okay, so this patient actually has diabetes. Uh, not very well controlled. And uh, this patient was told that uh, this can affect uh, their macula. And uh, so uh, the patient wants to ask you how and uh, what treatment available? Uh, yes, uh, indeed, the diabetes uh, is an important cause of uh, blindness. And the sad fact is that uh, diabetes prevalence in Singapore remains uh, fairly high uh, at about uh, 9%. Um, in adult population. And uh, the other sad fact is that uh, the prevalence of uh, diabetes effect on the retina also remain high. Um, it is about 10% of uh, all diabetic patients would have uh, some form of diabetic uh, retinopathy, meaning diabetes has affected the retina. Uh, diabetes can affect the retina in several ways, in particular to the macula. Uh, the same problem uh, occur. It's actually very similar to AMD, but it occur in the retina layer rather than the coronal layer. Now, in the retina layer of a patient with diabetes, a few things occur. One is that the blood supply uh, reduces uh, with time uh, due to the effect of uh, diabetes affecting blood flow and affecting the behavior of blood vessels in the uh, 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 behavior of blood corpuscle in the blood vessel. Um, and therefore, the tissues are hungry for oxygen. And then it sprouts uh, a normal uh, uh, blood vessel that can cause bleeding and leakage. But by itself, uh, diabetes also affects the blood uh, vessels, whereby the surrounding protective layer called parasites are slowly lost. And once you lose the protection layer, the blood vessel in the retina start to leak. Uh, where it's not supposed to leak. And when it leaks, it leaks uh, all form of protein into the retina, where it shouldn't have all those protein there. And you can see in this picture, yellow spots. Uh, these yellow 
lipopox uh, lipoprotein that leak out from the blood vessel through unhealthy protective layer. And so uh, this lipoprotein enter the retina uh, and spark off uh, inflammation in the retina. And then you get more and more leakage. And this is what we call diabetic maculopathy. Uh, earlier we mentioned uh, diabetic uh, can also cause uh, blood vessel to grow. And that's called proliferative diabetic condition. That group uh, causes the bleeding. And this group that you can see in the picture uh, uh, is actually diabetic maculopathy. So for all patients that use patient use specialty. So um, very important to know that a person having diabetes must 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 go for eye screening because of the high prevalence of condition uh, among patients with diabetes and early stages. Uh, the treatable stages and, and therefore uh, underline the importance to stepping forward for annual eye check uh, if a person has diabetes. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Lim. Yes, I think it's a real challenge for all the physicians, including our eye specialists, because of the increasing aging population. These uh, chronic diseases uh, have already become a quite heavy burden to our healthcare system. Yeah, we should really like uh, make our efforts together with our patient, try to uh, control their uh, chronic disease condition. Okay, yeah, so uh, move on to the next question. So my team is uh, showing this uh, question from a patient who's been working from home uh, for nearly six months. I think it's really, everyone can feel it. Okay, yeah, so it's a really a special thing for this year. Uh, lately, this patient has uh, developed some eye irritation and the mild blurriness while using the computer. So. Uh, he also wants he also wants to ask you is that a macular problem and uh, how can he actually prevent this yeah I think the picture is vividly showing you what happens actually when you stay at home to work <laughs> you have to toggle in between your kids and uh, your uh, housework and also your work yeah so uh, working from home is a new clinical syndrome uh, multitasking is one. Second is that often time we are glued to the monitor screen for protected uh, duration. Uh, we work from office, actually there's a time for travel that you take your eyes off the screen and you reach home, you tend not to look at your work computer. But uh, working from home, uh, often time is protected uh, number of hours spent on screen. And when that occurred, the problem is that we uh, incur a lot more visual attention. Now, when the person uh, incur visual attention, the common problem is that we blink less. Um, when we are reading it, something, the blink rate actually drops uh, tremendously from a normal of about 12 blinks per minute to about 5 blinks per minute, meaning on average, you would have about 10 to 12 seconds uh, in between blinks uh, when you read on screen. And therefore, uh, the tear in our eye is not uh, enough to wet the cornea for that duration of time. So a person reading occasionally is still fine, but if you read intensely for hours on hours, then the tear film in front of our cornea then was much open and caused irritation, even sharp pain and blur and misty vision. And some patients feel dry and some patients feel reactive tearing. You feel as if the eye uh, is uh, pushing out tear and yet it is, uh, you know, no tear flow down your cheek. And that is a reactive uh, paradoxical tearing sensation. All these symptoms are very typical of dry eyes. Um, they are different from macular symptom. Macular symptom, yes, uh, you can get uh, blurred vision, but oftentimes it's distortion and blotchy blockage of the vision that characterize a macular problem. The other thing is persistence. Yeah? For a person having dry eyes, the vision changes from blink to blink. When you blink again and you clear up, and then you stop blinking again, it blurs up. Um, and whereas a uh, patient with AMD or macular degeneration, uh, the uh, blood vision is persistent. 
um, in addition, the person having this problem can buy tier supplement off the shelf from uh, any uh, pharmacy. And if you apply eye drops, say about four times a day, six times a day, your symptoms should abate uh, within a day or two. And if it doesn't abate, it's not better with tear supplement, then be careful, it's not dry eyes. Yeah? Um, so dry eye can be uh, easily tackled by remembering to blink artificially more often, just like what I'm doing now. And blinking is not a bad habit, it's actually a good habit yeah, when you read. Number two, if need to, have uh, some tear supplement at home uh, and uh, use it uh, as and when you need it. Uh, and also, uh, if you have blood vision, uh, a good test is to see whether vision clear up with tear supplement. If it does not clear up, then it's not, uh, it's not dry eyes, it's something else. Thank you, thank you, Prof Lin. Yeah, this patient, I hope Prof Lin has answered your question. I think it's uh, many people's concern during this period also. Okay, so uh, in the interest of time and also for the benefit of our Mandarin speakers, I think the next question is asked in Chinese. Uh, so, uh, Professor Lin, uh, uh, this patient has Prof uh, uh, 那么它累积在眼睛里面造成眼睛里面的视网膜发炎发炎的时候就有好多这个血浆漏出来漏到视网膜里面就造成视网膜水肿你看到中间那个照片就是视网膜的断层图你可以看到视网膜整个肿起来照片上面的一张照片就看到这些血斑打了这些针之后治疗效果很好但是有一些病人治疗效果是比较不好但是没有打针的病人就更糟糕有很多病人只是没有照这个医生指示打针或者打两只就放弃了有时候眼睛就会盲掉而且不止盲眼睛有时候会很痛那是因
And uh, I noticed that uh, there are many questions asked uh, from the public uh, in our Q&A board, okay? Uh, I'm sorry that uh, because of the limitation of the main program, we cannot address all your questions one by one, but please join us in the public forum, okay? We will have other retina specialists to answer all your concerns, okay? Yeah, so it starts from uh, 11, okay? We will welcome you there, okay? Thanks, problem again. I understand that you have other commitments. You will leave us first, okay? Thanks again for uh, being here with us. It's really our great honor to have you here. Thanks, Prof Lim. Uh, thank you very much for the opportunity to participate. I'm really uh, honored to have this opportunity. And uh, thank you, everyone, for listening in. I wish you best of macular health. And uh, if there's one take home message, if you have a friend who is smoking, please tell them, please stop smoking. Thank you. Bye. Yes, the best message. Thanks, thanks. Thanks, Prof Lim. Okay, I think now it's time for us to move on to our next session, uh, which is uh, the role of uh, primary eye care in screening and the early detection of macular disease. The increasing aging population and the rise in prevalence of many chronic diseases in Singapore is a significant impact in our healthcare system. Our public need to recognize that primary eye care plays a crucial part to ensure the effective and the cost-saving healthcare ecosystem. Primary eye care is the essential building block for prevention of blindness in all communities. The role of our primary eye care professionals is vital in the early detection of macular diseases. Early detection is also the key to preserving vision. Let us find out more on the roles of the various primary eye care providers in the community. Without further ado, let's hear from Mr. Lo Ren Kai, an optometrist and a representative from Singapore Optometric Association. Please, uh, Mr. Lo. Yes, everyone, my name is Ren Kai and I'm an optometrist and a member of the Singapore Optometric Association. An optometrist is someone whose duty is to make sure that eyes are healthy and to prescribe visual aids like spectacles and contact lenses to help people see better. If we detect any eye problems that need medical treatment, we refer the patient to eye doctors or ophthalmologists. As part of AMD Awareness Week, we hope that this sharing will help you to be better informed about your eyes and vision. So why do things look blurry? One of the reasons could be an eye power problem. Most people would associate blur vision with that. And it is true that if the eye has myopia, long-sightedness, presbyopia, astigmatism, vision can be blurry. But today, we are going to talk about a more serious reason for blur vision. Our vision depends on a structurally intact eye and brain. Any part of the eye, from the front to the back, can affect our vision. But for today, we'll be going to focus on the macula, which is the center portion of the back of the eye in level of the retina. The macula is responsible for your keenest, sharpest vision, as well as most of your color vision and 3D vision. So obviously, it's a very important part of our eyes. What can go wrong at the macula? Lots of things. Here are some examples of scans which shows the layers that make up the macula. On the left, we have a scan of a normal retina. And on the right is an abnormal scan, which shows disturbances in the layers. So there are many millions of connections in the sensitive macula, any small changes can disturb your vision. Over here at the bottom right of the screen, it shows bleeding in the macula. Usually there's no pain, the eye does not look red or different on the outside. Vision loss may not be obvious at first because sometimes only one eye is affected. But there can be a sudden decrease in vision which warrants an urgent referral to the eye clinic. So how do optometrists check for causes of blurry vision. Optometrists are like detectives. When something goes wrong with your vision or eye, or even before something can go wrong, we can pick up signs that explain why vision is getting worse or find risk factors that can cause vision to go bad. So this is what optometrists can do. This is what we do in a typical eye exam. So it's not just about checking your eye power and reading letters or number charts. 
We do several tests to measure the vision and function of the eye, but also a small check of your eyes to make sure that it's all that it should be. Particularly for AMD, we examine the back of the eye using various equipments and methods. We are mindful that AMD may not be the only reason why eyesight can get worse. So, when our patients say that they can't see well, it may be difficult for them to describe the problem exactly. So when someone says things look blurry, there are different kinds of blur as well as different causes. Now, blur vision from AMD can often be confused with blur due to other reasons. So if you or someone tells you that their vision is blurry, get the eyes checked by an optometrist as soon as possible. What can optometrists do for AMD? For those who are already diagnosed with AMD and have reduced vision, optometrists can prescribe special visual aids and occupational advice to help someone maximize their residual vision. So in conclusion, there are many types of blur vision. There are many reasons for blur vision. Not all blur vision is due to eye power. Don't let blur vision turn into blindness. So optometrists check your eye health as well as your eye power. Before I conclude, I'm going to leave you with the three Ds. First, defend your eyes against AMD. How do we do that? We do that by having a healthy lifestyle and eye protection. So for healthy lifestyle, we mean do not smoke, exercise regularly, and eat colorful vegetables, not just your carrots and eye protection such as UV or blue light protection. Secondly, detect. So by having regular comprehensive eye examinations and not just an eye power check, we can detect AMD and or other eye problems. And the last one, timely diagnosis. Diagnosing it early can lead to early treatment and have better results if we treat the problem early. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you, Renkai. Thank you very much. Thank you, Renkai. Thanks. It's a really wonderful sharing. It's a very good summary of AMD. And the audience, you hear from us again and again the same message. Please, please quit smoking and I suggest your friend to quit smoking, your relative as well, okay? Change the lifestyle. And also early detection of macular disease is very important. So go for your eye screening, especially if your relatives, your parents are above 50 years old, you should encourage them to do that. Okay, so now uh, besides actually optometrists, we also have opticians who are oftentimes the first line of response where eye care is needed. Let's hear from Mr. So Weizhi, representative of Society of Opticianary Practitioners, how they actually perform eye screening for macular diseases and what kind of suggestion you give, they actually give to the patient as an optician. Hi, I'm Weizhi from the Society of Opticianary Practitioners and I'm happy today to be able to provide a sharing during the launch of the AMD Week. I want to share a story of the friend who asked about AMD and why he should be concerned about it. So I had a lunch webinar with my friend, where he asked me certain questions and I'll actually share them with you. So the first question he asked was this, what is AMD and why should I care? So AMD is a medical condition which results in blood or no vision in the center of where you see. So most of the time there is no complete blindness, but the loss of central vision can make it hard to recognize faces or to read. So this condition typically occurs in older people in early stages with no symptoms. So my friend said that he understood. So he went on to ask, how does it look like? So what he did was that he tried to Google AMD and he only found this was his own explanation, round oranges with white spots. So in order to explain to him in an easy way, what I did, during the webinar, I just took a piece of tape, I covered the web camera, and I show you what it will look like if a patient had AMD. So it will be something like this. Your central vision will be quite blurred if the condition is quite serious. So he understood that straight away. 
So the next question it I had for me was, what's a typical job of an optician like? So what's your job like? So for opticians, we actually work with other practitioners in optometry or eye doctors in primary eye care. What we do is that we provide basic eye care advice as well as dispensing and fitting of glasses based on a prescription provided for by the optometrists or eye doctors. So the next question you asked me was an interesting one. Have I actually referred anybody for macular condition? So I would say yes, with the increasing aging population, we will actually encounter more elderly patients with eye disorders in the practice. So for me personally, around 10, one out of 10 patients, elderly patients that I have, I will actually refer them to eye specialists, be it for macular conditions or for cataracts that they're not able to see well, even with the glasses on. So interesting thing is for those uh, patients with macular conditions, they actually come with a prescription by the eye doctors. What do I suggest do with them? So I do have a fair bit of patients that come uh, via referral by doctors to get glasses. So one of the, the easiest thing to do for them is actually the eye testing as well as the fitting and dispensing of the new devices. The hardest part is actually to explain to the patients how to use them. Because one of the things is that they will actually get glasses with magnifiers on them. Or in simple usage, they will actually have a handheld magnifier which is given to them. So as you can see, the magnifiers by themselves actually cause a fair bit of distortions. So in this example, you can see that when you're looking at objects, you need to hold it at a certain distance, otherwise the lenses will be blurred. The other condition that they will have encountered when they're using these magnifying devices is that they're used to holding their digital devices at quite a certain distance. So with these magnifiers, they realize that they need to hold the objects quite a, a fair distance to be quite close in order to see up close the magnification. So these are just some of the adjustments in their lifestyles they need to do when they're using such magnifiers. So it is most important to gain confidence and independence when they are using these optical devices. So the next question my friend had for me was what do I use for examinations? So I'm just going to show you some of the tools that we use in our trade as opticians. The first, of course, most of us will be familiar with because uh, a lot of us are actually short-sighted, is this trial frame. So you have this trial frame. You have different lenses with different colors. Most of the time, the one in black would be the one for magnifying or for hyperops for those that are long-sighted. And the one in red is for minus lens for those that are short-sighted. So one of the ones that I like most uh, personally is this. These are actually prismatic lenses that we do use for certain therapies or if the patient has muscle conditions that we use to align with such lenses. So this is a fantastic lens because this actually makes your finger disappear. So look at this. Actually, the finger is just moving upwards. So these are the different things that we use. Some of other tools that we will actually use are pliers like this that we use for adjustment of the glasses that makes you feel like you're a dentist. And we also have sophisticated tools like as simple as a PD ruler to measure your pupil distance for centering the lenses. Or we have complicated charts like this that we will use for dispensing. They will actually do fitting onto the patients. So this makes sure that all the glasses are properly aligned before we dispense them to our patients. So the last question they had is this, how would I know if he might have macular conditions? So what I can say is that there will be a gradual change in the quality of your vision and you will find that straight lines will actually appear distorted to you. So this might lead to loss of the central vision. So it's important if you suspect yourself to have a macular condition, you can actually do home screening using an Amsler chart or Amsler grid like this. So in such a situation that you see that the straight lines are a little bit blurry or distorted to you, in fact, if they're not straight, we actually prompt them to see an eye doctor. So it's very, very important for, for you, for you all to be aware that primary eye care can provide screening options such as AMD screening. And opticians are the frontliners you will actually encounter when you're making glasses. I always believe that early intervention, prevention is better than cure. And eye screening programs are available in participating shops during the AMD week and all year round for stores with equipment and trained staff that can provide comprehensive eye examinations. So I hope at the end of this, you all have a better understanding on the role of opticians in AMD. And thank you for the time and opportunity to speak until we meet again. Bye-bye.
Thank you, Weizhi. Thank you very much. It's such an interesting way of showing us how our patient vision actually looks like uh, with macular disease and a very good simulation of a real screening scenario. Okay, so we now have heard from our eye care uh, partners. Uh, they are really the first contact with our patients as well as a lifetime continuing care providers in our eye care. They have shown us the provision of primary eye care, which is an appropriate, accessible and affordable care that meets patients' eye care needs in a uh, very comprehensive and uh, competent manner. On the other hand, when faced with eye condition, a lot of uh, our publics will actually visit a GP or their family doctor first. Therefore, primary physician also plays an important role in early detection of macular diseases. And more importantly, various macular diseases are actually associated with chronic systemic diseases such as diabetes, high blood and the high cholesterol. So the controlling of these uh, chronic diseases lies in our GP's hand. So they are really the most frequently visited doctors in our life today. So we have the honor to have Dr. Ong Guan Hong from Early Merry Christmas. Sorry, uh, probably just now you couldn't hear me. So let me repeat myself. The next moment, we will move on to our GP friend, who's the hero, oh, in, hero in helping us to control our patients' chronic diseases, which will actually affect their macular diseases. Uh, today, we have the honor of our Dr. Ong Guan Hong from Pen Care Medical Clinic. So you can see that Dr. Ong is wearing a Christmas hat. She, he wishes everyone a very early Merry Christmas. And also Dr. Nathan Xu from 57 Medical Clinic together with Madam En, a patient who suffered from vision loss due to diabetic retinopathy. They are going to share with us their stories and experience. Please, Dr. Ong and Dr. Xu and Madam En. Hi everyone, good day. I'm Dr. Ong. I'm a GP in a family clinic in Amokyo. I'm glad to have the pleasure today to share with you the importance of controlling diabetes, high blood pressure and high cholesterol and their role in preventing the onset and the progression of diabetic retinopathy. I will often receive letters from specialists telling me to help them control their patients' medical conditions. Often the patients don't understand why it is important to control their medical conditions and how is it related to their eye disease. Today, I have the pleasure of demonstrating to you uh, this patient who has been referred to me for the control of his diabetes and to prevent the progression of his diabetic retinopathy. Hi, Dr. Ong, how are you? Um, I'm good. I was told by my eye specialist recently that I have a diabetic uh, retinopathy, and they told me uh, that it could they usually um, cause the eye blindness. So they, I asked for the medicine, but they asked me to find you. Why is that so? Okay, so I've read the letter that your specialist gave, uh, gave me. Uh, right now, your condition is classified as mild diabetic retinopathy. So it is not of. Uh, it is an early stage retinopathy. We do not need any uh, intervention on the eye itself. The main aim of treatment here is to prevent the progression of your diabetic retinopathy. The main risk factors for your diabetic retinopathy would include diabetes, uh, poorly controlled blood pressure, and high cholesterol. Thank so you. by referring you to me, uh, as long as you can control these uh, conditions and make sure that uh, you, uh, we prevent okay, the, the progression of the condition, then we, we, you may not need any treatment for your eye in future. Mm. Every year, we will do yearly screening for your eyes to make sure that there is no uh, progression. So beyond mild diabetic retinopathy, mm. if there's progression, then we'll be, uh, uh, we will send you back to your eye doctor for treatment, okay, which includes injections and uh, phototherapy. I see, I see. Does it mean I... I don't have to go back to the eye specialist usually, I just follow up you here. Okay, so okay, it's because you have very mild diabetic retinopathy, you don't have to follow up with a specialist in the hospital. We have facilities here and in the community to help you monitor your 
diabetic retinopathy and to make sure that there's no further progression. Once there's any progression, there's avenues for us to refer you back to your specialist for further treatment. The main uh, mainstay of treatment here is still the control of your chronic conditions like your diabetes, and your high blood pressure and your high cholesterol. Uh, at the GP level, there are actually three options for you to continue to follow up for your eye condition. First of all, uh, the polyclinic has a, a screening service okay, where you can go there once a year to do a, a retina photo. But they'll take a picture of the nerve of your eye and it will be graded okay, by people specially trained to do so. So your second option is, as part of our primary care network, that we have engaged a vendor to do diabetic eye screening. So we will send you there uh, to a special bus where they will perform the diabetic photography for you, eye photography for you, and they will be graded in exactly the same way as if you were to go to the polyclinic. Okay, and the third option is uh, at the GP level in our clinic, I can perform a visual equity test to check your eyesight, followed by a nerve function test and an Amsler test to check whether is there any disruption of your uh, macula. Also, I will perform a fundoscopy to look at the, your eye nerve directly and see whether is there any diabetic eye changes. Uh, so, for some clinics, okay, where we have experience with uh, ophthalmology. Uh, we have slit lamps in our clinic where we can use it to examine your eyes professionally and use it to grade uh, how severe or how mild your diabetic retinopathy is. Diabetes affect many systems in the body. The effects can be seen in macro, macrovascular and microvascular disease. They affect our large blood vessels, increasing the risk for heart attack and stroke. They also affect the capillaries in our eyes, kidneys and nerves, which lead to diabetic retinopathy and macular edema. Eye disease and vision loss are a major complication of fully controlled diabetes. Diabetes increases the risk of glaucoma, cataract, and diabetic retinopathy. Diabetic retinopathy, which causes vision loss, occurs in about 30% of those with diabetes in Singapore. About 7-10% to of diabetics would develop diabetic macular edema over a 20-year period. This condition is when there is swelling of the central portion of your retina responsible for most of your vision. Sinkang 像麦当这种患有糖尿病以及各种慢性疾病的患者在政府诊疗所以及各种GP家庭诊所非常常见 for Life Program 这样可以早期发现和诊治慢性疾病 
，我好像有糖尿病。麦德恩提到了他爱吃米饭，米饭当然作为主要的碳水化合物来源，被认为是糖尿病人的敌人。我在这里想说的是，完全不忌食米饭也是一个非常错误的观念。糖尿病饮食的控制最关键的是和你的家庭医生探讨，密切的监测你的血糖，同时制定一些个性化的饮食方案，在享受美食同时，也不会忽略你的健康。说我什么事哦？我我啊不大好啊。嗯，再说洗把手，哇嘛，看不哩捏，等下全是，那些那爱多，那些帅啊的，哎，我得我去说呐。哦，哎呦，我得我去加个肉，哎呦，爱得王八蛋。我问人咯，嗯，哎，有需要车咯，嗯，呀，现在呢，现在爱吃皮巴，爱吃皮巴就不少，八，但是，哎，那爱吃那个锅碗，啊，早上很清楚，晚上除非是什么灯啊，尤其是 orange color 那种灯哦。会看着你的眼哦，会好像拉住你这样跑，所以我我我在 M R T 那边走哦，看到啊，你要看你的手机哦，看白灯，不要用黄色的灯，尤其是马路上哦，用那种黄色的灯哦，其实不好的，尤其是下雨天哦。看不到了，看不到 bus stop 了。糖尿病给麦德恩带来了视力丧失、心脏病等各种并发症，为他和家人带来了很多不便和压力。这样的病人对医生来说也是一种挑战。作为家庭科医生，我们需要积极配合专科医生，控制好他们的慢性疾病，并且帮助他们管理在政府医院的各种 medical appointment。我想告诉你们，其实。政府和医院也提供了很多的社会支持，包括了 S V A V H and Touch Program 等等。所以，即便你们被这些并发症所困扰，也不要放弃希望，学会和 m a d e N 一样积极乐观的面对，利用各种政府的资源，最大化的提高你们的生活质量。要放很大个，就写很大个字。哎，但是最好是用马克来写，包边好像要很深的啦，太浅的看不到。但是 I find in, I find many fine glass。嗯，我看 fine， 我估计 they give me one by one， 而且 I don't want this one， I want the whole thing like this one， but they all love me。You buy this one 啊？ This one for people, ah,、uh, unless people use it for seeing bird. I say you be there lah. I not seeing bird lah. I want to see the the bus. Ah,、uh, see his the appointment. C V H also has some workers. Hmm. Not every day. Not every day. Ah, I will call him. 问候我，哦，不错了，啊，我那时候有去做工，做那些木马啊什么啊，啊，但是从我做了人也，他们就不不给我去了，啊，看大他们，大那边有什么活动呢？他们有时候有活动，再会打电话问我要不要参加了。哇、嗯啊，很，他们很关心我。如果比如好像来啊，爱国飞奔，他说你去搞什么定案，去我阿特克里啊啊，爱国
appointment, you go, you go and see why you 很好啊。就像有些人叫他们推推轮椅都不要推，嗯，啊，因为每次我三个月都要去阿姆比那边看医生的，啊，等如果换药啊什么啊。或者不得话换药啊，我就打电话叫他来。哦，这有时我吃那个糙米啊，五谷米、糙米，或者啊麦片，啊比较会耐饱。我会慢慢劝他，啊、呃，看医生，对他们好，是不是啊、呃？我建议他，挨着他家里的人照顾他，或者他请一个工人。其实他们已经叫我请一个工人了，嗯。Thanks to our Dr. Ong and Dr. Xu, two very handsome GPs, and uh, also more importantly to our very, very uh, lovely Madam Ng for stepping out her comfort zone and uh, share with us her journey in fighting with uh, diabetic retinopathy. We really appreciate your courage and uh, kindness. I'm sure all of our audience can really feel the positive energy and uh, her humor uh, from Madam Ng. In spite of her visual loss, she has been trying really hard to use her remaining vision with the help of different tools to make her function better. Yes, now comes to the point, better function. The ultimate goal of eye care is to help out our patient to have better visual function. Yes, certain macular diseases are potentially blinding condition. That's the reason we keep emphasizing to you the importance of early diagnosis and treatment. As an ophthalmologist myself, trust me, the task of breaking bad news uh, to our patient of a permanent visual loss does not become any easier with experience. But it's not the end of the day, even if you suffer from end-stage macular diseases and your eye doctor told you there's nothing much can be done medically or surgically. When I encounter such patients, I often tell them I understand your frustration and the difficulties, but we do have other ways to help you to maximize your vision function. So now let's hear from Mr. Alex Ling, who is living with sight loss due to macular diseases, and how he is coping with the help of services available to them. Thanks, Mr. Ling. Mr. Alex. Good day. My name is Alex Ling. I'm 58 this year. I have what you call macular degeneration, uh, which is the deterioration of the eye. And as a result, your retina has got holes behind. This has been on uh, for quite a while. For more than 10 years. Uh, I first discovered it was in year 2008 and it got worse in 2014. See, I used to come to Kote Port and that was since uh, 2014. The reason why I come to Kote Port is because I was told among all the hospitals Kote Port uh, the density is low and, and so not many is quite true because whenever I need an appointment at Cote Port, within one month or one and a half months, I, I, I get one. The reason why I got this is because uh, the, as what the doctor has uh, revealed to me uh, that uh, I was very highly myopic. I started wearing glasses when I was in my secondary school and year by year, uh, the glasses got thicker and thicker until uh, technology caught up that I can use contact lenses. Even then, contact lenses doesn't help. 
Okay, when at my peak, this was 2000, this was 1500. And I went through life when I was uh, uh, wearing lenses and it was very, very uh, difficult for me because you have to have the hands clean, uh, clean every night and then put them, and have to have, uh, put them in your eyes. And sometimes you may pop too far deep or or accidentally the, 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 the lenses may crumble up and hide in your eyelids or whatever. So you just have to be careful. But nevertheless, uh, I still go for further technology where the where they insert a artificial lens and take uh, remove the uh, natural lens so that I don't have to wear glasses or contact lens anymore. But that only helps with the front part of the eye. Okay. My problem is with the kidnap. People with my case, you will see frotters, the make white clouds, as well as uh, uh, spots. All right, and daytime you will see more than just white spots. At nighttime you will see darkness, just the opposite. Okay, and and it is quite dangerous sometimes if you are not careful walking out, out in the streets and the, the sunlight is too bright this is why I wear a cap uh, to, to protect the, to, not just my skull but also to avoid excessive uh, sunlight uh, for, for me it's not so bad I can still see people I can still see movement so I can at least avoid collision or, 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 or things like that of course there are some many many things that I don't see for example when I go shopping I cannot see the pricing, uh, the, the, the price tag, okay, and, 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 and I don't go out very often because uh, I do have, I do have difficulty in judging uh, steps, okay, so quite often if I if, uh, misjudge, I will fall down, okay? you know, and, and so I have to be very, very careful, it's not just a matter of the eyesight, it's also uh, your feeling of the environment. Uh, sometimes okay my, my my greatest challenge right now is not to port on the wrong bus because some bus drivers uh, they are merciless they won't they they come from behind they won't stop where there's nobody wait just bypass and what happened is sometime where I am at a location where I can where the bus do stop I see the wrong number okay uh, Basically, for reading, uh, I use magnifying glass and this special glass, which is which will magnify as you roll roll along. Uh, and the, the 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 thing is, you don't get perfect uh, uh, readings, but at least it's, it helps in a certain way. Uh, it helps. For example, when you are reading, when you are reading newspaper, or when you are reading graphics, meaning that uh, pictures with some words, and you have to read the words behind the picture. Nowadays, even newspapers, you have a lot of fancy design, whatever. But you even see see the headline sometimes. Okay, or the headline is with this. You can help. Right, that you at least read read the title or read the. Uh, this is something bigger that, that you, you, you need to see. I mean, uh, I mean, last time people used to use this to see stamp the coin or whatever, but now or even coming street. I mean, I mean, if if I need to see something really close and, and something very big, so. I can use a magnifying glass. Okay, and the other tool that we use is is a white cane, and this will cause, of course, uh, attention. It's a good thing that I not only just participate in normal activities in SAVH, I'm also in the diabetic uh, uh, diabetic uh, station where a group of us who are also having diabetics, diabetes 
we will sit down sometimes to discuss and, and share our, our experience and, and, and things like that so it doesn't make us feel lonely or make us feel we are by ourselves like we are different okay really we, we, we are not 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 that different because if you grow old anything can happen okay and and, and so uh, not to be ashamed of uh, what you are having right now because for, for me it's like it is better for me to seek help than not to seek help Thank you very much, Mr. Alex, for sharing. Yeah, now you have everyone have me again. So we really appreciate your keen interest in joining hands with our low vision uh, specialists to go through this uh, visual rehabilitation journey. Now I am really glad and inspired to see your confidence and the independence in leading your life. Dear audience, low vision patients are a group of patients with visual impairment that cannot be improved by medication, surgery, normal glasses, and contact lens. It's estimated 1.5% of Singaporeans are living with low vision. Macular diseases comprise a major part of this group of patients. Dr. Alex is a great example of patients who managed to maximize his remaining vision to the fullest potential through low vision service and continue to do things important to him and live a better life. Yes, better life. As Singaporeans, most of us will have to agree a big part of our life is enjoying food because we are all foodies. Who to blame? Because we are living in a food heaven. Hence, am I correct to say better life also lies on better food? So the next segment is to teach you how to eat for better sight. Lifestyle and the diet are modifiable risk factors in the prevention of some macular diseases, especially AMD. So the KTPH nutrition and the a dietitian team would now like to take you on a virtual shopping tour to recommend you on what you need to look out while you are doing your grocery for your site. Dear team, please. Hi, my name is Ryan Ong, Senior Dietitian from Kutipot Hospital. So a diet high in antioxidants and carotenoids, lutein and zeaxanthin, is well known to decrease vision loss from AMD as they help to maintain healthy cells and tissues in our eyes. And where can we find these nutrients, especially your antioxidants and carotenoids? It can be found predominantly in our fruits and vegetables. So let me share with you some tips on consuming and selecting fruits and vegetables to give you the best chance of reducing your risk of AMD. So spinach high in carotenoids, especially your lutein and zeaxanthin, can help to protect the tissues and cells in the eyes from damages. They can last for 5 days and look out for their tender stems and leaves for freshness. So white cabbage, especially high in antioxidant vitamin C, can last for 3 days. And to look out for its freshness, try to choose white cabbage with a compact and firm head and they are usually free of black specks. Kailan, high in vitamin A and C, which are antioxidants. They can last for 7 days and look out for a powdery and waxy thick leaves. So another way to ensure freshness of your vegetables is to buy local produce. Examples of your local produce include Thai Sing, Spinach Bayam, and Kang Kong. So look out for the packaging of vegetables the next time when you head out for your grocery shop. So grapes are high in vitamin C. It's best to consume within 3 days, but maximum up to a week. And look out for grapes that are firm, plump, and tightly attached to the stem. Avoid grapes that are moldy, wet, and also shriveled as well. Citrus fruits such as your orange, pomelo and lemon are known to be high in vitamin C and carotenoids, especially your lutein and zeaxanthin. They can last up to 3 weeks and try to choose these fruits with some weight to it for freshness. So 
To prolong the shelf life of your fruits and vegetables, do keep them in the fridge to ensure its freshness, with the exception of certain vegetables and fruits such as potato and bananas. Do remember to avoid storing your fruits and vegetables in the same compartment as fruits can cause green vegetables to turn yellow when placed together. So to properly prepare your vegetables, the first step is to remove soy portion of vegetables and cut off the base. The second step is to wash away any residual soy in a basin of water. The last step is to soak your vegetables in fresh tap water for 15 minutes before rinsing once again. So what about fruits? To properly prepare your fruits, gently rub the produce while holding them under plain running water. Are you concerned over fruits' shiny appearance? Fruits have a protective layer of wax to help them resist moisture loss and slow down their natural spoilage. So to learn more about the selection, storage and preparation tips of other fruits and vegetables, please log on to www.sfa.gov for more information. So to ensure that you consume adequate antioxidants and carotenoids, do ensure to consume at least two servings of fruits and vegetables daily. So what is considered as one serving of a fruit is equivalent to actually 10 longan or grapes, one fee size of an apple, orange or pear, one medium banana or one wedge of papaya, pineapple or watermelon. So what about your vegetables then? So one serving of your vegetables is equivalent to 100 grams of your non-leafy vegetables or either 150 grams of your leafy vegetables. So don't forget to eat different coloured fruits and vegetables every single day to ensure that you get the full spectrum of your nutrients that your body really needs. Finding it hard to always buy fresh produce all the time, why not try your frozen or canned vegetables? Frozen vegetables and fruits that includes mixed vegetables and frozen spinach, Brussels sprouts and berries have no nutritional differences from the fresh counterparts as they are frozen quickly to retain much nutrients. So just remember there's no need for you to thaw or soak the frozen vegetables and fruits before cooking. While canned vegetables may have slightly lesser nutrients as compared to fresh or frozen vegetables, they are still great sources of antioxidants and carotenoids. Tips to make your canned fruits and vegetables healthier Do remember when buying your canned fruits, try to choose those that are soaked in fruit juice rather than syrup. And for your canned vegetables, try to actually wash your vegetables and discard a brine solution to limit the intake of sodium. So, do you meet the recommended serving sizes of fruits and vegetables every day? If not, learn with us 8 tips to increase your fruits and vegetables today. So to increase your vegetables, why not try these 4 tips? So first tip is to fill half your plate with vegetables. The second tip is to choose 2 sides of vegetables from your economical rice store. The third tip is to ask for extra vegetables in your favourite local dishes such as your hor fun or your fried rice. Last but not least, try adding tomatoes or even finely grated carrots to your pasta sauce. So what about your fruits? Why not try these other 4 tips? The first tip is to add fresh fruits to your morning cereal and oats. The second tip is to have a bowl of fruit within reach for convenient snacking. The third tip is to freeze your fruit chunks or even puree them to make them into popsicles. And last but not least, try blending your fruits with low-fat milk or yogurt to make them into a healthy, delicious smoothie. Hope you have picked up some tips to reduce the risk of AMD today. For more nutritional tips and inquiries, do look us up at kdph.com.sg or call us at our Core Dietitian Hotline 
Thank you, Ryan. Wow, there are so many facts I don't know about food preparation, storage. I don't even know that frozen food is just as uh, nutritious as a fresh food. And what a shame. I think I have been doing a lot of things wrong in my whole life. Thanks again for nutrition and the dietitian team. Thank you for teaching us. Thanks, Ryan. So uh, once you are done with your grocery shopping, what is next? Cooking, of course. I'm not sure about you, love, especially during circuit breaker time uh, when the restaurants were closed. I was really scratching my head, thinking about what to cook and eat. Uh, and when I look at my Facebook, Instagram, you know, suddenly everybody just becomes master chef, starting to post their fantastic culinary skills. I wish I can cook this well. And uh, getting a very healthy and delicious recipe is really important to keep us healthy and strong during this pandemic. So today, our chef, uh, we'll be sharing with us our nutritious ratatouille recipe. I'm so looking forward and because I'm really feeling a bit hungry. Uh, yeah, so it's your show time. Please bring it on. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks, Ryan, again for being our chef here. Uh, Ryan, okay, can everyone see me? Can everyone see me now? Uh, sorry, yeah. Yes, we can see you. Can, right? Okay, good. So basically, good after, uh, Good morning, everyone. So my name is Ryan. I'm actually the di senior dietitian from Kutuba Hospital. So the thing is, um, I'd just like to thank actually the AM AMD committee for actually inviting uh, NND department to actually share a little bit about healthy eating. So basically, from the supermarket tour itself, I'm sure most of you guys actually have understand that, you know, at having adequate uh, antioxidants and also your carotenoids are actually really the fundamentals in terms of actually preventing your uh, AMD. So basically for today, what we're going to do is we're going to do a very, very quick and simple recipe, which is very, very healthy. So what I'm going to do is we're going to do our ratatouille and I'm going to share with you the recipe in a short while. So over here, what you see is that we're going to do the ratatouille. So basically ratatouille is what we call a French like vegetable stew. So the dish that we're going to share today is very, very high in antioxidant, very high in carotenoids, but at the same time, they are also very high in fiber. So one thing about, let's say, fiber in that sense, it actually helps to reduce your risk of diabetes because basically what it does, it helps you to actually maintain your weight. At the same time, what it does, it actually helps to actually prevent your sugar spike, especially when you eat your vegetables together with your carbohydrate dishes. So in terms of the recipe, for those who actually do want to prepare the, this recipe later on, you guys can actually take a picture over here. So what we actually do have is that in KDPH, we have a lot of recipes in our website, which I will share with you the website later on. And all the recipes that we have, there are actually eight ingredients or less. So why is it that we actually choose eight ingredients or less? Uh, it's actually to make it a lot easier for people to actually do a bit more home cooking. Because we know for a fact that, you know, in terms of home cooking as compared to eating out, home cooking has a lot of benefits. And one of the things that we talk about in terms of your fruits and vegetables, home cooking is the best way to actually incorporate these powerhouse foods into your diet as compared to eating out. Because eating out, you're going to eat your whole fan, eat your, 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 let's say, fried rice. It's a bit difficult for you to add the additional vegetable to it. So as much as possible, we try really to actually encourage our patients and also our staff to actually do a little bit more home cooking in that sense. Okay, so everyone take picture already? Yes, we do. And I, okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to, uh, let me just stop this one first. We're going to go into the recipe itself. So what we're going to do is going to share with you what are the recipes for this, uh, this dish. So basically in terms of the recipe that we have, we have one medium zucchini, we have one medium brinjal, and then we have our one medium yellow capsicum. And then also our tomatoes, we have about three tomatoes over here. So what we have done is we actually tiny, uh, thinly slice all these vegetables in that sense. So later on, we're going to teach you how we're going to go about actually doing the plating. Lah. So besides the vegetable, what are the other things, ingredients that we have? We also have our onions as well, which we mince up. And then also we have our thyme to actually give it the extra flavor, lah, which is more like your herbs. So one of the things that we're going to teach later on as well uh, is that when you use a lot of herbs, a lot of spices, you will find that actually you will cut down on the amount of salt or, or the seasonings that you use in your cooking, which is going to be a lot healthier in terms of preventing hypertension, keeping your blood pressure in check. Okay, the next one is actually our pasta sauce. So our pasta sauce that we use today is actually the canned one. But the thing about this canned one that we use today is actually a lower in sodium one. 
So over here, you can see the healthier choice symbol, which will teach you how to do a bit of comparison later on. And then the last ingredient that we have over here is our olive oil. Okay, so these are the eight ingredients that we have that actually we can actually just use it to actually prepare our dish itself. Okay, so now we're going to move on to our steps. So let me just switch over to the other screen. Okay, everyone can see over here? Yes. Can, uh? Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to preheat the oven here, but then you can't see the oven here. Lah. So we're going to preheat the oven to 190 degrees, and then we're going to do the plating of our vegetables. So what we're going to do is we're going to add in our, tomato, uh, our pasta sauce. That's the first step. Okay, so as I mentioned to you earlier on, uh, for this pasta sauce that we use, it's actually the lower sodium version. Okay, so this one is actually about 340 to 350 ml of your pasta sauce. So we see over here, right? Okay, I don't know whether you can see. So you can see there's a healthier choice symbol over here. And then when you actually do a comparison of, let's say, maybe an original one that doesn't have the healthier choice symbol, uh, how do you actually see which one is actually lower in sodium, which one is healthier? So what we always do is we look at the per 100 grams. Okay, the reason is because, right, for your serving sizes, different companies, they have different serving sizes. So it could be that one company say that, hey, one serving size is 50 grams, the other one says 100 grams. So if you can do the comparison like that, it's not really very good. Lah. So we will use at per 100 grams to compare. So you see the original one that we have over here, right? So per 100 grams, the sodium that we have here is 360, whereas the one which is the lower in sodium is about 295. Okay, so you can see, if it, uh, let me just adjust this one. Okay, so you can see that actually this one is actually much healthier. Lah. So the thing is, right, if you look at the recipe that we have today, we don't have any salt at all. So what we actually use is we only use one kind of seasoning that contains sodium to flavor our food. So a lot of times right, when we talk about you know Asian cooking, or let's say when we talk about you know some of the other Malay cooking as well, right, we kind of use soya sauce, la, black sauce, la, salt, everything all at one time. So in order for you to reduce the amount of sodium, the best thing you can do is just use one type of seasoning and then you try to tweak a little bit from there and see, okay? Okay, so once this is done, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our onions, okay? So for the onions itself, right, what we actually, uh, the reason why we add the onions in is actually to give the dish that sweetness. So once the onions are actually being cooked, uh, it will actually give that sweetness to the dish itself. So we're just going to marinate it, or we're going to mix it together to make sure that everything is actually well mixed. So if you want, there's also optional ingredients that you can have. So over here, right, I also do have garlic as well. Right? Okay, so remember, as much as possible, use more of your spices right, to actually flavor your food items rather than using your salt seasoning. Right? Okay, so once this is mixed already, we can start to do our plating of our vegetables. Okay, so this is quite freestyle. Right? So right over here, we have your brinjal, your tomatoes, your... your Zucchini and also your yellow capsicum. Huh? So it's quite pretty style. You can choose what color you want to start off first. Huh? So I'm just going to spread this part even because I'm huh? sorry. Okay. So a lot of people always ask me, vegetables huh, need to buy organic or not? Okay. So the thing is, right, there's a few tips that you have to remember. So the first thing is that if let's say yeah, if you don't eat enough vegetables to begin with, huh, don't worry so much about organic first, okay? But let's say if you do eat vegetables and you know that you're eating enough, then another thing that you want to take note of is that if let's say if you're eating the same types of fruits and vegetables every single day, uh, then maybe it's good for you to actually buy organic food items. Because the thing is about your pesticide la, or your, chem your chemical fertilizer itself, basically right, for different fruits and vegetables, you use different kinds of chemicals and also your fertilizers. So if you eat different kinds of fruits and vegetables every single day, uh, you don't really have to worry so much about the pesticide accumulating to a point that it will cause some problem, okay? So the thing is, right, when we say organic food items, just remember, if, let's say, you actually eat the same food item all the time, then maybe, yes, it's actually okay. But if, let's say, if you are eating a wide variety, which is what we are recommending to our patients and also to the public as well, then don't really, don't really worry so much about the organic item in that sense, okay? So we're just going to plate this up very quickly. Okay, so you can see that we use quite a fair bit of colors today. Lah. So the thing about, let's say, your lutein and zeaxanthin, which is actually something that is actually found to actually be beneficial to prevent your EMD itself, it actually really found, is found mainly in, let's say, your green leafy vegetables and also your bright vegetables as well. 
So if let's say if you're doing your cooking now, in terms of let's say your home cooking, try to incorporate a little bit more colors into your dishes. Okay, rather than just using, let's say, like, you know, your, for instance, let's say your, your kai lana, or let's say maybe your broccoli, you can try to add maybe like your cauliflower to it to add a little bit more colors in that sense. Okay, so once this is done, okay, I'm going to do this halfway lah. So this one quite okay lah. So then after that, what we're going to do is we're going to add in our olive oil. So for the olive oil itself, we actually use two tablespoons. And for the olive oil that we use today is the extra virgin olive oil. So one thing that people always get the misconception, uh, they think that hey, extra virgin olive oil, very healthy, I can use more of it. But actually, do you know that let's say like in comparison to let's say like your normal cooking oil or let's say like maybe your luck itself, uh, in terms of the same weightage, uh, the calories is exactly the same. So even if let's say if you are using your extra virgin olive oil, even though it's healthier because it actually contains a lot more of your unsaturated fat, which can help to lower your LDL in that sense. Uh, but the thing is, if let's say if you're somebody who's very concerned about your weight, got a bit of diabetes problem, want to lose a little bit of weight, uh, then whatever kind of oil, whether is it healthy or not healthy, you have to try to reduce as much as possible. Okay, so once this is done, then what we're going to do is we're going to add in our thyme. Okay. Okay, so we actually prepared one sample earlier on, okay, that this is the big finished version. Nice or not? Huh? Quite nice, right? So in terms of the colors and, and the colors and everything. So basically, but in terms of the portion that we want to aim for, right, in terms of your vegetables, to make sure that you have enough adequate antioxidants and your carotenoids, uh, we're going to show you the portion that you are supposed to aim for, let's say your lunch and your dinner. Okay? So basically, right, in terms of your fruits and your, veg your vegetables itself, you want to aim for roughly around half a plate of vegetables. So that is considered as one serving. So for you to actually have that two servings a day, uh, so what you're supposed to have is you're supposed to have actually roughly around one plate of vegetables uh, for the whole entire day, okay? To make sure that you have enough fiber and also you do have enough antioxidants and also your carotenoids as well, okay? Then, uh, okay, so before we actually finish, I just got a few uh, teaching points to actually share with you guys. Okay, so basically what we actually do with a lot of our cooking demos, uh, we always end off with some teaching points uh, that people can actually remember after they actually finish with the, the cooking demo itself. So the first thing that we have for today, there are three points. The first point will be in terms of vegetables itself. They are not only high in your antioxidants and your carotenoids, but they're also very high in your fiber that can reduce your AMD and also your diabetes risk, okay? And then also as much as possible in terms of vegetables, we try to incorporate a little bit more different colors in your diet every single day. We try to have different colors so that we have all the vitamins and the minerals that is in uh, that the body actually really needs. And in terms of the portion that we are supposed to be aiming for, we want to aim for roughly around half a plate of vegetables for your lunch and dinner. So for one whole day itself, we want to have one whole plate of vegetables in that sense. Then for your saturated fat, okay, today itself, we actually use your olive oil. So remember that in terms of your saturated fat, they are actually the healthier fat that you want to have that can help to lower your LDL levels as compared to, let's say, the ones that are your higher in saturated fat. So examples will include like your chicken skin or let's say like in terms of your animal fat or even let's say your cooking oil that contains a lot of palm oil inside, they basically contain quite a fair bit of saturated fat. So just remember that whether is it healthy oil or not healthy oil, the calories are still very high. So you still want to be actually using it sparingly. And last but not least, in terms of the sodium content of the food items, when you do your own home cooking itself, you want to try to use only one type of sodium containing seasoning to actually do your cooking as opposed to using multiple seasonings at one time. Because when you use multiple seasonings, it's going to make it a lot difficult for you to control in that sense. So the thing is also as much as you can, when you actually go for your seasonings itself, try to use the ones that are your healthier choice symbol, but be very careful with the quantity that you use. So it doesn't mean that hey, it's lower in sodium, uh, then I use more of it. When you use more of it, actually it defeats the purpose. So let's say if you're going to use the original amount of, let's say like your soya sauce, which is the one teaspoon. So the one that is lower in sodium, you want to use one teaspoon as well. Okay. And last but not least, when you do your home cooking, to reduce the amount of sodium in your diet, what you can do is try to use a little bit more herbs and spices to flavor your food. 
Okay, so these are the three main points that we want to bring across today. So if you have any other questions, okay, or let's say you find that hey, you want to join a bit more of other cooking demos that we have, you can always go into our KTPH Facebook itself. We will actually have some periodically uh, cooking demos that we share with the public. Or if you have any questions that is related to your diet, uh, you know, uh, health and everything, you can always call our call or dietitian hotline, which is 9832 two, uh, sorry, 983 -22983. Or let's say if you want to see a lot of other recipes that your eight ingredients or less, you can always go into our www.kdph.com.sg to actually look at some of the cookbooks that we have and also the recipes as well. Okay, so that will be all for today. Any questions that anybody would like to ask? Hey, thanks, Ryan. You make me very hungry now, eh? Uh, yeah, are you uh, in office now? <laughs> yeah, uh, yes, ah. pop by. My okay, whole team okay. is hungry, yeah. Oh, really? Ah. Okay, let me pop by later. Let's share your <laughs> Actually, we can smell it from here. After going home, I will definitely try it myself. Mm. So colorful and so easy to prepare. I'm sure it's delicious. Thanks, Ryan. Thanks Thank again. You. Everyone, let's take Ryan, give us a very great uh, grocery tour and the cooking show. Thank you, Ryan. Yeah. Uh. So we hope uh, so far you have enjoyed our program this morning. Do remember to maintain a well-balanced diet and to keep active in our uh, silver years. I would like also to remind all of you to go for our annual eye screening as early detection saves the site. We have over 130 eye screening locations. Please scan the QR code or visit www.ktph.com.sg to register with our nearest eye care provider. We can also register for the online public forum that is brought to you by Tantau Singh, NUH and the SNC. For those of you who are looking forward to our public forum, kindly note that public forum will begin at 11 a.m. Do pop by again to know more about macular diseases. We will also have a live Q&A session where we can take all your questions. Okay, I noticed that there are a lot of questions being asked in our Q&A board. So in our public forum, we will address your concern uh, by our specialists. And uh, we do appreciate some of our very active audience who has been uh, with us from the beginning of the program and giving us suggestions. Okay, I'm trying also to cater to your preference in terms of my style of uh, hosting. Sorry for the inexperience in hosting. This is the first time I'm actually hosting this event. Uh, with your suggestion, I believe next year you can look forward to it. Ladies and gentlemen, so I hope that you found this morning presentations informative and useful. Before I end our launch program, I would like to share the AMD 2021 will be held in October 2021. And I'm very thrilled to announce next year onwards, KTPH Community Eye Care Prizes will be given to the community to encourage our public, including our students, to participate and contribute to raising awareness of macular diseases. The prizes comprise different exciting categories, including local de logo design competition, in which the winner's design might be used perpetually for our AMD event and also artwork, photograph, and the handcraft competition. We hope through these competitions, we can put the power of uh, awareness, uh, macular diseases into your hands. We will update everyone once again with more details. Thanks once again, everyone, for making this event a very memorable one. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for all our guests of honors. Thanks, Prof. Farm. Thanks, Prof. Eid. Thanks, <coughs> Prof. Tan. Okay, thank you everyone. Thanks to all of our audience. Thanks to our participants. So that makes the end of our program. Yeah, thank you. See you next year. And here I would also like to take this opportunity to thank our team, the organizing committee. Yeah, thanks everyone. Without your efforts, this will not be possible. Yeah, hope you enjoy the program. See you next year. Thanks everyone. Thanks.
Yeah. Thank you, Sandy. Well done. Uh, and thank you to, thank to you the all. whole team. Yeah. Okay. Bye bye. Have a nice weekend. Thank you. Everyone, have a nice weekend. Can try Ryan's recipe after you go home. Uh. Okay. Okay. So, hi everyone. I hope uh, everyone enjoyed the AMD Week launch program. Uh, my name is Dr. Yo Tun Hang, uh, Associate Consultant at the Khu Teck Wat uh, Hospital Eye Department. We are giving four talks in four uh, major languages on some common diseases affecting the macula. Hopefully, we have some time to answer some of the questions at the end of each talk. Uh, please feel free to type in your questions in the Q&A. So next slide. Let's start off by explaining what the macula is and why is it so important. So imagine the eyeball as a camera system. The furthest back part of the eyeball is this orange red layer called the retina. The retina is like the camera film of the eye. The center part of this camera film is called the macula. So the macula is the most important part of the retina because it gives us our center vision and allows us to see things in detail. So without the macula, we will lose our central vision and the ability to see objects in detail. Next slide, Next slide please. So uh, many diseases can affect our macula. There are some symptoms that suggest that you may have a problem with the macula. So first, you may have poor central vision. Sometimes you see a fixed gray or black spot in the center part of your vision. Uh, you may also have uh, reduced color vision and contrast. One unique feature uh, in macular disease is distortion of vision. That means that you're seeing a straight line as crooked or wavy. Glasses will also not make much of a difference in your vision if you have a macular problem. Lastly, in macular disease, these symptoms are usually there all the time. Next slide. Now, uh, the picture on the top left is an Amsler grid. The grid is a quick and simple tool that you can use at home to detect 
possible macular problems. It is used by testing one eye at a time. So you sort of cover one eye at a time to test. The picture on the top left shows what a normal eye will see when they look at the macular grid, uh, at the Amsler grid. The picture on the top right demonstrates what a person with macular disease may see when they look at the grid. Basically, if lines on the grid appear to be missing or wavy, a review by an eye specialist is recommended. You can uh, find a free app with an Amsler grid developed by the KDPH eye department on Google Play or Apple App Store to do your own self-testing. So just search the name Mata, M-A-T-A. -A. Next slide. Uh, when you see your eye doctor, you will go through a full eye examination. On top of that, the birth scan is commonly done. This scan is called an optical coherence tomography, OCT in short. Uh, this retinal scan allows the doctors to see a side view of your macula in great detail. This quick and safe test will help diagnose all common macular disease. The left image shows how a normal macula appears on the scan. The image on the right shows a 3D scan with an abnormal distorted macula. Next slide. So the uh, macula can be damaged by many diseases. The common ones can be due to the conditions that affect the elderly and conditions that uh, affect people of any age and are usually caused by underlying medical conditions. Some of the common ones include age-related macular degeneration. I'll call this AMD for the rest of the presentation. Uh, AMD is the commonest cause of blindness in patients above 60 years of age. Uh, epiretinal membrane and macular holes are some of the other common macular diseases found in the elderly. Two macular diseases that are due to med medical conditions are diabetes-related macular disease and retinal vein occlusion, which is usually due to high blood pressure causing a blocked blood vessel in the retina. Next slide. So let's start with AMD. AMD is a deterioration of the health of the macula related to aging. It is the commonest cause of blindness in the elderly. The loss of vision occurs because of either loss of retinal cells or an abnormal growth of new blood vessels under the macula, which leak and bleed, causing damage to the macula. Next slide. So uh, this uh, slide shows the two types of AMD. The commonest type is the dry form of AMD where there's accumulation of waste products in the macula as we age. In this early form, dry AMD will have little or no effect. In, in its early form, uh, dry AMD will, not, will have little or no effect uh, to the vision. However, in some cases, dry AMD may cause progressive damage to the macula leading to severe vision loss. Also, about 10% of dry AMD convert to the wet type, where abnormal blood vessels grow under the macula. These abnormal blood vessels can bleed and cause leakage into the macula, causing damage. So without treatment, uh, the leakage and blood will cause scarring of the macula and lead to severe vision loss. It is important to remind everyone that both dry and wet AMD in its severe form can lead to blindness. We will talk about treatment for wet AMD in a while. Uh, there is, however, no known treatment for dry AMD. In Singapore, the most common form of severe AMD is the wet type. Next. So nutrients such as uh, lutein and zeaxanthin that are found in green leafy vegetables and omega-3 in oily fish uh, have been shown to slow down the, uh, the worsening of AMD. If you are unable to get sufficient intake through your diet, you can consider supplements containing the ARITS2 formula. Two is uh, that is uh, A R E D S and the number two. Also, smoking uh, increases the risk of AMD by 300% more. So it cannot be emphasized more that stopping smoking is the single most uh, beneficial lifestyle change that one can do to prevent AMD. Next, while there's no treatment at the moment for dry AMD, there are treatments uh, for wet. AMD that aims to stabilize and maintain the best vision uh, for the patient for as long as possible. In some patients, uh, treatment can improve vision. The treatment, however, does not cure the disease. The options include hot form of laser, uh, cold form of laser, or injections into the eye 
with a medication called antivascular endothelial growth factor, anti-VEGF in short. So these treatments may be done in combination, but in most cases, the most effective treatment is with injection of anti-VEGF into the eye. So multiple injections are usually needed to control the disease. In some cases, the injections may need to be continued on an indefinite basis. The interval between ongoing injections is determined by the eye speci specialist in consultation with the patient. So you can see in the slide, uh, 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 go back, yep. the OCT in the right is an example of how injections can reduce the swelling and leakage at the macula in wet AMD. Next slide. Next, I would like to talk a bit about uh, epiretinal membrane. It occurs in 10 to 15% of patients over the age of 60 years old. The, uh, this occurs when um, the inside part of the eye that contains a jelly called vitreous. In all patients, as they age, the se jelly separates and moves away from the macula. In the photo on the left, the edge of the jelly is marked by white arrows, and you can see how it has moved higher away from the macula. Epiretinal membrane is formed when, in some cases, this movement of the jelly leaves a membrane over the macula. And uh, this is marked with a red arrow on the picture on the right. As time passes, this membrane thickens, crinkles, and pulls the macula, causing distortion and loss of vision. Thankfully, majority of the patients only have mild epiretinal membrane that do not cause uh, significant symptoms and do not need treatment. Next slide. Okay, sometimes the separation of the jelly can pull on the macula so much that it causes a hole. Patients with a macular hole will lose their central vision and have significant distortion. You can see this on the OCT scan on the right. Macular hole occurs usually in persons above the age of 55. Uh, they can be caused by trauma to the eye. They can also be seen in patients who are very, very short-sighted. Uh, can also be seen following retinal detachment surgery. However, in most cases, it occurs for no apparent reason. A person with macular hole will usually need surgery to help preserve their vision. So, uh, epiretinal membrane that requires surgery and macular holes are treated with a surgery called vitrectomy and membrane peeling. The operation is a form of keyhole surgery and it involves uh, making three small points on the eye to allow sur the surgeon to place instruments into the eye. First, the jelly inside the eye is removed and then the membrane that causes all this pulling on the macula is peeled and removed uh, as seen on the slide. Uh, as seen on the slide. So you can see the membrane, which is stained blue uh, by a special dye during the surgery, is being peeled away. So, uh, yeah, the OCT shows uh, before and after images of the epiretinal membrane after it's being peeled off. You can see that the scan, you can see on the scan that the normal macular shape is re-established after operation. This is a scan showing the Next slide, please. Yeah, this is the scan showing the macular hole and how it's closed after one month of uh, surgery. Okay, next slide. Now let's move on to macular diseases associated with medical problems. Next. Diabetes is the commonest cause of blindness in working age adults. Diabetes causes an eye disease called Diabetic retinopathy, which can lead to blindness. One in three diabetics have some form of diabetic eye disease. The control of diabetes is most important in preventing these blinding complications. Next slide. Diabetic eye disease is a broader topic. So today we'll just talk about how diabetes can affect the macula in a condition called diabetic macular edema. As diabetes damages the blood vessels, uh, the blood vessels that are damaged at the macula start to leak fluid into and around the macula. The macula becomes swollen, affecting its vision, which causes vision loss. Uh, affecting its function, which causes vision loss. In some cases, this swelling can be treated with laser, but most are now treated with the same medication for wet AMD, which is anti-VEGF injections to the eye. Again, it must be emphasized that multiple injections are usually needed to control the disease. The control of diabetes is also vital in controlling this form of macular disease. Next slide. People with diabetes, high cholesterol, and especially 
high blood pressure can develop a blockage at the vein within the retina. This retinal vein occlusion can occur at the branch of a vein or main central vein. Once blocked, leakage from the vein occurs into the macula, causing it to swell and hence affecting the function of your macula and the vision. Next slide, please. So the treatment of uh, retinal vein occlusion is similarly with injections of anti-VEGF. In some cases, injection of steroid may help, especially in the case if the case is not improving on anti-VEGF. The control of your high blood pressure, diabetes, and cholesterol is also highly important. So, uh, okay, that was a quick overview of some of the commonest macular diseases. As with many conditions, early detection and treatment leads to the best outcomes. I would like to remind everyone that the Amsler grid is a simple tool that you can use at home to detect possible macular problems. Also, especially for the elderly, it is worthwhile attending annual, annual eye screening events. And if you have any concerns with your eyes, see your eye care professionals for assessment. Lastly, I would also strongly advise everyone to check their health for diabetes, high blood pressure, and cholesterol if you've not uh, already done so. Okay, thank you so much for listening. Uh, let's uh, see if there are any questions. I know we answered some of the questions earlier on during the, the launch program. Let's have a look. So, okay, so Su Yi Ru, your question is, is there any way to measure eye pressure at home? Will sleeping on the side, side increase your eye pressure? Uh, there are devices that you can use to measure eye pressure at home, but usually you will have to get it from uh, an eye care professional. And uh, uh, sleeping on the side does not increase your eye pressure. Are we okay with time? Okay. Okay, so the next question is whether retinal vein occlusion is curable after multiple injections. Uh, in general, uh, things like AMD, retinal vein occlusion, diabetic, uh, macular disease, uh, they are not seen as curable, but the injections are there to help control the disease and the outcomes are very favorable with uh, injections. However, they will usually require multiple injections and sometimes um, you may need uh, injections in the long term. And uh, uh, it all depends on the, the response to the injections. Uh, the next question is uh, dry AMD, no bad medicine, what can we do to prevent? Okay, so uh, the main thing is uh, nutrition and your general health. So in dry AMD, the prevention is, uh, is the, your, your diet intake. So if you have leafy vegetables and take uh, oily fish in your diet, it generally has some effect to prevent uh, progression of your AMD. Uh, and also a healthy uh, exercise and also uh, uh, exercise and also in general helping, helping uh, controlling your diabetes and all that will help uh, maintain your macular health as well. Okay, there's some other questions. Uh, I'll just answer this about the macular hole. Will macular hole happen again after surgical healing? Uh, sometimes it can happen again, uh, but usually um, after surgery and it's closed, it uh, it's generally uh, remains closed. And uh, the other question is, each time eyes feel tired and uncomfortable after use of computer. So in general, the computer, uh, using a computer and digital screens for long periods of time will lead to dryness in the eyes. So uh, when the eyes are dry, they don't have this protective coating, it will start to feel uncomfortable. So the main thing uh, you can do is uh, using lubricant. So eye drops that you can buy from the pharmacy are very helpful in uh, treating uh, the tiredness and uh, discomfort. And also uh, sometimes just taking a break from the screen time will also help with that. Uh, there are some supplements that can help uh, with uh, dry eyes as well, such as omega-3. 
So uh, some of the things that you can do. Okay, I think uh, in the interest of time, we will try to answer all these questions uh, in typing. We will move on to the, uh, the Mandarin talk and Dr. Jason will be uh, giving the talk in uh, Mandarin. Hi, can you hear me? You can hear me? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Hey, how? Okay, 大家早上好，我是邱德巴医院啊啊眼科部门的李建成医生呢。今天呢，我会跟大家谈谈一些有关的常见疾病。如果大家有什么问题的话呢，可以通过Zoom把问题写下来。我们的眼睛呢，就像
呃，目前呢，肝性老年黄斑病变呢，其实没有有效的治疗方法。不过呢，研究表明说，多叶啊、呃，那个多绿的多绿色的蔬菜和油性鱼类呢，会含有那个类胡萝卜素和不饱和脂肪酸，是是预防老年黄斑病变的有效成分。枸杞子呢，最主要的成分是玉米黄素，就是所谓的叶酸碱，它是类胡萝卜素的一种。但有哪些营养品呢，对老年黄斑病变会有帮助呢？呃，目前唯一一个研究证明的就是 Aris2 的配方。那 Aris2 他们就发现到有含维生素 C、维生素 E、叶黄素、玉米黄素、锌、铜的配方，都有助于呃延缓晚期老年性黄斑不病变的病程。呃，之前啊、呃，我们之前的讲座都有都一直在不停的嗯、呃、劝告大家说，这个吸烟呢其实是目前最确定、最直接、证据最多的老年黄斑病变，呃，致病的因素。而吸烟者呢，患上失性的老年黄斑病变的风险呢，可以增加到两到三倍。呃，失性黄斑病变之前的治疗包括了热激光和冷激光，不过在近来的十年呢。对付湿性黄斑病变最有效的治疗方法是那个玻璃体腔药物注射。我们会注射一个叫做抗啊 VGF 或者抗血管内皮生长因子。那如果及时接受到治疗呢，百分之九十的病患者呃视力会至少维持，而其中的百分之三十的视力还会进步。在这个右边的 OCT， 我们可以看到呢，病患者的黄斑部呢接受了三个月的抗 VGF 治疗后呢的进步。而视网膜下液体有减少，黄斑的轮廓也恢复接近正常。那还有什么其他的因为老化而导致的黄斑病变呢？那这是黄斑前膜，黄斑部前膜呢是一种沿着视网膜黄斑区的内界膜表面生长的一个纤维膜，而六十岁以上大概有百分之十到十五会有黄斑前膜。黄斑前膜是什么形成的呢？他们我们的眼球里面其实有一个透明的像果冻一样的物体，叫做玻璃体。随着年龄的增长呢，玻璃体后会脱离。这玻璃体后脱离之后呢，残留在啊、呃、黄斑部表面的玻璃体细胞呢，会促使视网膜表现细啊、呃、表面的细胞向黄斑部迁移和血流，而形成一层膜。有时候呢，黄斑前膜会导致黄斑部水肿、皱褶。在这种情况呢，就可以引起。引起明显的视力下降或者视物变形，这在这种时候就是那个阿姆斯勒方格表呢，可以查出有什么视物的变形。呃，这个呢是黄斑裂孔，黄斑裂孔的发病原因有包括了外伤、高度近视、视网膜落啊、呃、视网膜脱落手术后啊的并发症，还有特发性，也就是说其实原因不明。而呃，其实最常见的发病原因呢，其实是特发性。而黄斑裂孔就发生于六十岁以上的中老年人，而且重女轻男，女性患者的比例要比男性高出一倍，呃，双眼眼的患者百大概百分之十二。黄斑前膜呢和黄斑裂孔呢都可以通过手术治疗改善视力，而一般来说呢，手术越早成功率就越高。啊、呃，黄斑前膜和黄斑裂孔的手术呢，都包括了玻璃体切割术。在这个手术开始呢，我们会先在眼白做三个直径与小于一个毫米的切口，之后呢，在玻璃体腔内进行那个手术操作，将玻璃体切除。那如果有黄斑前膜啊、呃，我们会用镊子将那个黄斑前膜给包除。而如果是黄斑裂孔呢，我们会将那个内界膜包除，目的就是要促使黄斑裂孔闭合。和黄斑裂孔周围的视网膜复位。上面的 OCT 呢，是黄斑前膜病患者呢术前的扫描，而下面是病人术后的三个月的扫描。你们看，黄斑部的轮廓已经恢复接近正常了。这个病人呢有黄斑裂孔，而接受手术过一个月，黄斑轮廓也开始恢复接近正常。现在我们谈谈一些因为其他疾病而引起的黄斑病变。呃，首先我先跟大家谈谈一下糖尿病，因为糖尿病是我膜病变，其实是在职成年人失明的主要原因之一。平均呢，每三位糖尿病患者呢，会一位有糖尿病视网膜病变。呃，糖尿病性的黄斑水肿呢，是指因为糖尿病而引起的黄斑中心凹
的细胞呢外液积聚，而且导致视网膜增厚或者硬性渗出沉积。目前呢，糖尿病性黄斑水肿呢的治疗方法包括了激光治疗和玻璃体腔注药。当然，我们也需要和内分泌科或者家庭医生配合，将病人的血糖控制好。视网膜啊，静、呃、脉阻塞呢，是在糖尿病视网膜病变后第二大致盲的视网膜血管疾病，而发病群体呢，会以老年人为主，常见的年龄范围为八十六十岁以上，而最常见的因素呢，其实是高血压，其他原因包括了呃动脉硬化。视网膜炎症，还有血液高粘度等。而视网膜静脉阻塞呢，可以分为两种呃类型，一个就是视网膜分支静脉阻塞，另外一个是视网膜中央静脉阻塞。而两种类型都可能会导致黄斑水肿。视网膜静脉阻塞呢，激发的黄斑水肿呢，主要的治疗方法包括了：第一，要先把那个病因治疗好，那包括了控制血压、血糖、血质。呃，来降低血液粘度，然后另外一个就是眼睛的治疗。那眼睛的治疗呢，包括了玻璃体腔注射、抗 VGF 或者类固醇。在这个右边的 OCT 图片呢，我们可以看到这个病患者的黄斑部呢，接受了第一次玻璃体腔注射注药后呢，其实那个视网膜有下的液体有减少，不过呢，在不久后呢，黄斑水肿而又复发。在经过了多一次的玻璃体注药后呢，黄斑轮廓才会恢复正常。好，最后很重要，我们要大家要记得说，提早发现，提早治疗。啊，谢谢大家。好，这样我们现在要进行那个讨论的时间了。我想看一下还有什么问题可以回答。稍等我一下子啊。呃，我们帮你整理了一些呃华语的问题。好，我看一下子。呃，有有人问，呃，有我们的培生问，中医治疗还有呃针灸眼睛，你觉得会不会有效率？呃、其实至于黄斑病变呢，我们首先我会就是说，我们都不是中中医中医药师了，我们都是西药的。不过，嗯、呃，现在其实嗯、呃，中药恐可能对黄斑病变。直接针对黄斑病变的治疗，可能据我们所知，效果还不是不是非常的好，证据还不是非常的强。但是呃，我们的培生可以吃一些像枸杞啊、蓝莓啊，嗯、就是营养方式治疗是可以啊。对啊，就是我们刚才刚才有说，就是吃枸杞子啊，或者那个多绿多绿叶蔬菜啊等等都可以帮忙。OK， 啊、呃，还有一个。华语的问题是啊、呃，这个培生问黄斑裂孔修复后还会再发生吗？啊、呃、啊，要怎样预防、啊？对，所以黄斑裂孔像这个之前那个杨医生也是有说过，就是黄斑裂孔修复后呢，嗯、呃，一般它一旦呃修复了之后呢，它复发的可能性虽然只是理论上来说是有，不过复发的可能性不会非常的高。而至至于避免的方法，我觉得基本上只可以就是说提早提早检查，提早发现。如果早一点发现，就早一点接受治疗，将会到时候呃，就以免那个病情会恶化。OK， 谢谢 Doctor Jason 啊、嗯呃，谢谢大家啊、呃，因为时间有限，我们要交给下一个啊、呃、Speaker。好，谢谢。谢谢，嗯。Hello, hi, hi everyone. Can anyone hear me? Hello. Yes, we can hear you. All right, thank you. Okay, selamat pagi dan salam sejahtera. 
Nama saya Dr. Kong, ya, salah seorang pegawai perubatan dari uh, Tan Tok Seng Hospital. Selamat datang ke Minggu Kesedaran Penyakit Makula 2020. Hari ini, izinkan saya berkongsi dengan anda tentang penyakit yang biasa menyebabkan makula dalam mata, man mata manusia. Ya. Kalau ada sebarang pertanyaan atau soalan, boleh tekan dalam chat supaya saya akan cuba jawab lepas ini. Okay. So, mata manusia adalah seperti sebuah, sebuah kamera. Retina ni salah satu lapisan saraf di belakang mata berfungsi sebagai filem dalam mata. Lokasi makula adalah di tengah-tengah lapisan retina dan ia memainkan peranan yang amat penting terutamanya dalam penglihatan warna, kontras dan apa-apa yang berada di tengah penglihatan kita. Oleh kerana itu, uh, macam mana kita boleh tahu bahawa kita ada masalah mata yang melibatkan makula? Biasanya, pesakit akan mendapati penglihatan mereka menjadi kabur atau bengkang-bengkok, terutamanya di kawasan penglihatan yang tengah. Selain itu, warna juga akan menjadi lebih pudar dan susah untuk membezakan warna hitam dengan warna putih. Oleh kerana semua masalah ini melibatkan filem dalam mata, simptom-simptom tersebut tidak boleh dibaiki dengan memakai cermin mata. Salah satu cara yang boleh digunakan untuk mengesan masalah makula adalah melalui perbandingan penglihatan kedua-dua mata dalam kehidupan seharian. So, bandingkan garisan-garisan yang kita nampak dalam setiap hari, adakah mereka lurus ke bengkang-bengkok? Tapi cara yang lebih tepat adalah dengan menggunakan carta grid answers seperti yang ditunjukkan di dalam gambar ni. Ya. Kita tumpukan uh, dan kita mula dengan gambar di sebelah kiri atas ni. Tumpukan perlihatan anda kepada titik hitam di tengah-tengah dengan menggunakan satu mata sahaja. Okay? Jika makula anda sihat, titik hitam itu akan kelihatan jelas dan garisan-garisan di tepi akan kelihatan lurus dan teratur. Sekarang ni, gambar di sebelah kanan pula menunjukkan contoh penglihatan yang bengkang-bengkok dalam masalah uh, pesakit dalam pesakit yang mempunyai masalah makula. Sekiranya penglihatan anda adalah seperti gambar di kanan, kita nasihatkan pemeriksaan mata oleh mana-mana doktor mata secepat mungkin. Ya. Biasanya dalam klinik pakar mata, salah satu ujian yang biasa dijalankan ialah scan OCT ataupun imbas OCT yang menunjukkan semua lapisan-lapisan saraf di belakang makula. Gambar di sebelah kiri ini menunjukkan scan makula yang normal dan sihat manakala kita orang tengok gambar di sebelah kanan menunjukkan masalah makula di mana permukaannya menjadi kurang rata. Sekarang kita akan berbincang tentang penyakit makula selanjutnya. Sebab-sebab penyakit makula boleh dibahagikan kepada dua kumpulan pesakit. Kita fokus kepada kumpulan yang pertama iaitu yang biasanya melibatkan pesakit yang berusia ataupun warga tua. Contoh-contohnya adalah generasi makula berkaitan umum ataupun AMD, pembentukan parut di permukaan makula dan pembentukan lubang di makula. Kita akan mula tentang di generasi makula berkaitan umum iaitu AMD. Seperti apa yang kita bincangkan tadi, dia merupakan punca keputaan yang utama di kalangan warga tua dan dia menjejaskan penglihatan dalam kira-kira 10% daripada semua pesakit yang berumur. AMD ini biasanya disebabkan oleh kemerosotan sel-sel retina dan juga pertumbuhan saluran darah yang tidak normal di bawah makula. AMD ada dua jenis yang utama. Yang paling biasa ialah AMD jenis kering seperti apa yang kita tengok dalam gambar yang kiri ini di mana ada pernumpulan sebehan-sebehan di kawasan makula yang kuning berwarna kuning ni. Tapi uh, pesakit yang mempunyai AMD jenis kering ni boleh mengalami penglihatan yang kabur tapi biasanya garisan-garisan masih akan kelihatan lurus dan tidak akan bengkang-bengkok. Jenis AMD yang kedua adalah AMD jenis basah di mana terdapat pertumbuhan saluran darah yang tidak normal di bawah makula. Kalau masalah ini tidak dirawati sepenuhnya, saluran darah ini akan mengakibatkan pembentukan parut di makula dan menyebabkan penglihatan yang amat kabur dan teruk. 60% pesakit yang mengalami AMD jenis basah ni boleh menjadi buta dalam jangka masa 5 tahun. Dan AMD jenis basah ni sangat-sangat penting sebab terdapatnya 4-12% risiko pelibatan dua-dua mata. Seterusnya, kita akan bincang tentang rawatan untuk AMD jenis kering dan juga basah. Sehingga sekarang, tiada rawatan 
sepenuhnya untuk AMD jenis kering. Namun demikian, kajian-kajian telah dijalani dan hasil tersebut telah menunjukkan faedah sayur-sayuran dan ikan yang berkandungan minyak omega-3 yang tinggi seperti salmon dalam pencegahan kemerosotan mata daripada AMD jenis kering. Vitamin-vitamin seperti lutein, zinc, vitamin C, vitamin E juga boleh membantu dalam masalah AMD jenis kering. Salah satu perkara yang sangat penting ialah kita nasihatkan pesakit supaya elak daripada merokok. Sekarang mari kita tengok pula rawatan untuk AMD jenis basah. Seperti yang kita bincangkan tadi, AMD jenis basah adalah lebih bahaya sebab risikonya yang lebih tinggi dalam menyebabkan kebutaan. Dalam jangka lebih kurang 10 tahun ini, cara rawatan yang paling utama dalam masalah AMD jenis basah ialah melalui penyuntikan ubat ataupun antibijet dalam mata dalam lingkungan satu suntikan dalam setiap bulan. Kajian telah menunjukkan bahawa selagi rawatan penyuntikan ubat ini boleh dimulakan dari tahap penyakit yang awal, kita boleh menstabilkan penglihatan 90% daripada semua pesakit dan juga boleh menyembuhkan penglihatan 30% daripada semua pesakit. Seterusnya, kita akan berbincang tentang pembentukan parut di permukaan makula. Masalah ini biasanya melibatkan 10-15% pesakit yang berumur lebih daripada 60 tahun. Dalam manusia, mata manusia, terdapat jeli seperti apa yang ditunjukkan dalam gambar di sebelah kiri dalam warna biru tua ini. Jeli ini biasanya melekat dengan retina dan makula kita seperti ini yang ditunjukkan ni. Apabila kita dah berusia, jeli ini akan menanggalkan diri daripada lapisan retina dan makula dan ini akan menyebabkan pembentukan lapisan kulit dan parut di atas makula. Lapisan ini boleh menjadi semakin tebal dan akan menarik makula menyebabkan penglihatan yang bengkak-bengkok, bengkang-bengkok dan juga kabur. Selain itu, pemisahan pemisahan jeli ini juga akan menyebabkan pembentukan lubang di makula seperti apa yang kita tengok di gambar sebelah kiri. Ini akan menyebabkan cerbisan retina yang ditarik keluar daripada makula ni lalu membentukkan lubang seperti yang ditunjukkan di gambar yang kanan dan pesakit yang mengalami masalah ni akan mengalami penglihatan yang kabur dan bengkang-bengkok terutamanya di kawasan penglihatan di tengah. Selain itu, pembentukan lubang seperti ini boleh juga disebabkan faktor lain seperti trauma dalam mata, rabun jauh atau pesakit selepas pembedahan retina. Ada, ada juga sekumpulan pesakit yang boleh mendapat masalah ini tanpa sebab yang tertentu tapi ini biasanya melibatkan lebih kurang 0.3% sahaja pesakit yang berumur lebih daripada 55 tahun terutamanya dalam golongan wanita. So untuk pembentukan parut dan lubang ni boleh dirawati melalui pembedahan dalam mata iaitu vitrectomy. Dalam pembedahan ini apa yang kita buat adalah mengeluarkan jeli dulu lepas tu kita akan mengupaskan parut ni dan memperbaiki lubang di makula. Kalau pembedahan ini boleh dibuat pada peringkat yang awal maka lebih tinggilah peluang untuk sembuh ya. Gambar semua ni adalah contoh sebelum dan selepas pembedahan. Ini imbas OCT ini menunjukkan perbezaan sebelum dan selepas pembedahan. Kalau kita tengok gambar di atas, dia menunjukkan uh, permukaan makula yang kurang rata dan selepas pembedahan, dia dah menjadi macam seperti normal. Ya. Gambar ni pula menunjukkan perbezaan lubang di makula sebelum dan satu bulan selepas pembedahan. Kalau kita tengok gambar di sebelah, uh, sebelah kanan ni, kita boleh tengok lubang yang ada dulu telah diperbaikikan. Okey, selepas perbincangan mengenai penyakit makula di kalangan tua, sekarang marilah kita bincang tentang penyakit makula di kumpulan pesakit yang kedua iaitu pesakit yang mempunyai masalah kesihatan seperti kencing manis, rabun jauh dan saluran darah yang tersekat di mata. So, penyakit kencing manis dan makula merupakan punca yang paling utama berlakunya kebutaan di golongan dewasa dalam uh, yang melibatkan satu daripada tiga pesakit yang ada kencing manis. Kencing manis akan mengakibatkan perubahan struktur saluran darah dan ini akan menyebabkan aliran cecair dan juga protein lalu mengakibatkan pembengkakan kat makula dan juga warna-warna kuning yang ada sepihan kuning yang di sekeliling makula dan cara rawatan untuk masalah ini adalah melalui rawatan laser ataupun suntikan dalam mata menggunakan antivijet 
seperti apa yang dibincangkan dalam AMD. Di dalam sesetengah pesakit pula, masalah makula yang dialami adalah disebabkan sumbatan saluran darah urat dalam mata. Kebanyakan pesakit yang mengalami masalah ini adalah pesakit darah tinggi, kolesterol, perokok dan juga pesakit yang ada kencing manis. Lokasi sumbatan tersebut boleh berlaku di saluran darah utama seperti gambar yang kanan ataupun cabang-cabangnya seperti gambar di sebelah kiri. Semua ini akan menyebabkan makula bengkak seperti gambar-gambar yang kita tunjukkan ke bawah ni dan ini akan menyebabkan penglihatan yang kabur. So rawatan untuk penyumbahan saluran darah uh, urat juga merupakan uh, suntikan ubat dalam mata menggunakan NTVJ ataupun melalui suntikan ubat steroid. Tujuan suntikan semua ni adalah untuk mengurangkan tahap bengkak makula supaya penglihatan pesakit akan kurang terjejas. Pesakit yang mempunyai masalah ini juga haruslah mengamalkan gaya hidup yang sihat, mematuhi arahan doktor dan mengambil ubat diorang untuk penyakit lain pada masa yang tepat. Ini adalah penting untuk mencegah saluran darah di bahagian badan yang lain daripada tersumbat juga. Kesimpulannya, penyakit makula boleh berlaku kepada pesakit daripada semua golongan umum. Seperti apa yang kita bincangkan tadi, pesakit boleh dibahagikan kepada warga yang tua dan juga pesakit lain yang mempunyai masalah kesihatan yang lain. Biasanya pesakit, pesakit masalah makula adat akan mengalami penglihatan yang kabur dan bengkang-bengkok terutama niat di kawasan pertengah, kawasan tengah penglihatan kita. Oleh kerana itu, tujuan perkongsian kami pada hari ini adalah untuk mengingatkan semua bahawa pengesanan awal adalah sangat-sangat penting sebab peluang penyembuhan adalah lebih tinggi jika rawatan boleh dimulakan pada tahap penyakit yang awal. Oleh sebab itu, jumpa doktor anda seawal mungkin jika anda mendapati penglihatan anda terjejas ataupun penglihatan anda menjadi bengkang-bengkok, pudar ataupun pelik bentuk niat. Sekian terima kasih. Kalau ada sebarang pertanyaan, boleh kemukakan je. Saya akan cuba untuk menjawab. Thanks, Lin Ru. Yep. Thank you. Thank you for your wonderful talk. I think we have... Um, didn't receive any questions in the day. Okay, but we are still continue to address uh, everybody's concern. Uh, we will move on to the next session. Thanks again. Uh, yeah. Thanks, thanks everyone for sitting in with us through the talk. I'll move on by inviting Dr. Mahesh, who will bring us through today's talk with uh, on the common macular diseases in Tamil. Thank you. Thank you, Lindu. Hello, uh, everyone. Uh, in the end, we have the macular disease. Again, the skin is very difficult. We are going to talk about the skin. So, skin is very difficult. Skin is a camera. There is a lens. There is a film. So, we are going to talk about the light. We are going to talk about the lens. We are going to talk about the lens. We are going to talk about the film. We are going to talk about it. அதே மாதிரி கண்ணில் முன் முன்னால் இருக்கக்கூடிய லென்ஸ்லேருந்து லைட் உள்ளே போய் கண் நிரம்புடைய விழித்திரையில் படும் அந்த விழித்திரையோட மல்லி மையப்பகுதி தான் நம்ம மேக்லான்னு சொல்கிறோம் ஸோ வயதாகும்பொழுது இந்த மேக்லாவில் பிரச்சனைகள் வரலாம் என்ன பிரச்சனை வரும் பார்வை குறைஞ்சி போகும் கலர் விஷன் அதாவது வண்ணங்கள் பார்க்குறது வந்து குறையும் ஒரு ரெண்டு ஒரே மாதிரி இருக்க ரெண்டு பொருளுக்கு இருக்கிற வித்தியாசங்கள் பார்க்குறது குறையும் அது கண்ணாடி போட்டாலும் இம்ப்ரூவ் ஆகாது பார்வையில் வந்து நேர்கோடுகள்லாம் கோணலாக தெரிய ஆரம்பிக்கும் ஸோ இது ஆம்ஸ்லர் கிரிட் அப்படிங்கிற ஒரு ஒரு சின்ன ஒரு காகிதம் இதில் வந்து கட்டங்கள் இருக்கு இந்த நடுவில் பார்த்தோம்னா இந்த கட்டங்களில் இந்த வளைவுகள் ஏதாவது இருக்கான்னு நம்ம கண்டுபிடிக்க முடியும் இந்த இடத்துல நீங்கள் பார்க்குறீங்க இல்லையா இது மாதிரி வளைவுகள் தெரியும் விழித்திரை நடுவில் பிரச்சனை வந்தால் இது மாதிரி ஸோ நம்ம ஹாஸ்பிட்டல்லேருந்து இந்த ஒரு ஆப் கிரியேட் பண்ணியிருக்கோம் இது உங்கள் ஃபோனில் டவுன்லோட் பண்ணிக்கலாம் இப்போ கூகுள் பிளேலையும் இருக்கு நம்ம ஐஃபோன் ஆப்லேயும் இருக்கு இதை பண்ணீங்கன்னா நீங்கள் அதை எப்படி பண்ணணும் எப்படி உங்கள் நடு விழித்திரையை நீங்கள் பாதுகாத்துக்க முடியும் பரிசோதிக்க முடியும் எல்லாமே டீட்டெயில்ஸ் இதில் இருக்கு ஸோ அந்த விழித்திரையை பார்க்கறதுக்கு நம்ம இந்த கருவி யூஸ் பண்ணுறோம் இது பேர் ஓசிடி இதில் வந்து இந்த விழித்திரையை கம்ப்ளீட்டாக நம்மளால் பார்க்க முடியும் எல்லா லேயரும் பார்க்க முடியும் 
இதுக்குள்ள நடு வீட்டில் எந்த பாதிப்பும் வந்தாலும் நம்மளை நம்மளால அதை பார்க்க முடியும் இப்படி இந்த கண்ணில் பார்த்தீங்கன்னா இது வந்து நார்மல் இந்த பக்கம் வந்து அந்த விழித்திரை வந்து பாதிச்சிருக்கு ஸோ பிரச்சனைகள் எப்படி வரலாம் வயதாகும் பொழுது வரலாம் எந்த விதமான வேற வியாதிகள் இல்லாமல் ஜஸ்ட் வயசுனால மட்டுமே பிரச்சனைகள் வரலாம் இல்லைன்னா கூட இருக்க வியாதிகள் நம்ம சுகர் இருக்கு ப்ரெஷர் இருக்கு இதனால கூட பிரச்சனைகள் வரலாம் ஸோ முதல்ல வயதுனால இருக்க பிரச்சனைகள்ல பார்ப்போம் அதுல முன்னோடியா இருக்கிறது வந்து ஏஜ் ரிலேட்டட் மேக்ல டிஜெனரேஷன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவோம் இல்லை ஏஎம்டின்னு சொல்லுவோம் இது வந்து ஐம்பத்தி ஐந்து அறுபது வயசுக்கு மேல இருக்கவங்கல பத்து பேர்ல ஒருத்தருக்கு இந்த பாதிப்பு வரலாம் இது அந்த விழி புள்ளியோடைய அந்த செல்ஸ் எல்லாம் இதனால பாதிக்கப்படுது ஸோ இதுல ரெண்டு டைப் இருக்கு ஒன்னு வந்து ட்ரைன்னு சொல்றோம் இதுல வந்து அந்த நீர் பசையோ ரத்த பசையோ இருக்காது இங்க இருக்கிற அந்த செல்ஸ் எல்லாமே கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சமா வயதுனால பாதிக்கப்பட்டு செத்து போயிடும் அதனால பார்வை குறைபாடு ஏற்படும் இன்னொரு விஷயம் வந்து ஈரம் அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் வெட் ஏ அப்படின்னு இங்க வந்து என்னன்னா புது ரத்த குழாய்கள் வளர்ந்து ரத்த கசிவு ஏற்பட வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு நீர் சேரும் இது ட்ரீட் பண்ணாம விட்டுட்டோம்னா கொஞ்ச நாள்ல வந்து அந்த இடத்துல வந்து ஒரு சின்ன தலும்பாயி ஸ்கார் ஆயிடும் ஸோ பார்வை பார்க்கும் பொழுது இங்க நம்ம பார்க்கிறோமோ அந்த நடு பார்வை கம்ப்ளீட்டா போயிடும் இந்த ட்ரை ஏ அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் இல்லையா அந்த நீர் பசை இல்லாம இருக்கிற ஏ எம்டிக்கு விட்டமின்ஸ் சாப்பிட்டா அதனால அந்த பிரச்சனைய தள்ளி போடுறதுக்கான வாய்ப்புகள் இருக்கு நிறைய கீரை பச்சை காய்கறிகள் இந்த மாதிரி கலர்ஃபுல்லா இருக்கக்கூடிய வண்ணம் நிறைந்த இந்த காய்கறிகள்லாம் சாப்பிடுறது மீன் கூட வந்து இந்த உல்ஃப் பெரி அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவோம் இந்த சைனீஸ் மருந்து கடைகள் எல்லாம் கிடைக்கும் இதுல வந்து இருக்கக்கூடிய நிறைய அந்த விட்டமின் சத்து நம்ம கண்ணுக்கு ரொம்ப நல்லது ப்ளீடிங் உள்ள ரத்த கசிவு இருந்துச்சுன்னா அதை மூன்று முறையில வைத்தியம் பண்ணலாம் ஒண்ணு லேசர் பண்ணலாம் இல்லைன்னா கோல் லேசர்னு சொல்லுவோம் போட்டோ டைனமிக் தெரப்பின்னு நரம்புல வந்து மருந்து கொடுத்து அந்த மருந்து கண்ணுக்குள்ள வரும்பொழுது அதுக்கு லேசர் பண்ணலாம் இப்ப பெரும்பாலான பேர் வந்து கண்ணுக்குள்ள இன்ஜெக்ஷன் பண்றோம் இந்த மாதிரி நீரில் வச்சு இந்த இடத்துல மருந்து போட்டோம்னா இந்த மருந்து இந்த ப்ளீடிங்கை கட்டுப்படுத்தி அவங்களுக்கு நல்ல சிகிச்சை ஆரம்ப காலத்திலேயே பண்ணிட்டோம்னா நிறைய நல்ல சிகிச்சை வரும் அடுத்த பிரச்சனை வந்து இஆர்எம்னு சொல்லுவோம் எப்பி ரெட்டினல் மெம்பிரேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்லுவோம் கண்ணுடைய விழித்திரை மேல ஒரு லேயர் செல்ஸ் வந்து அப்படியே வந்து படியும் படியும் பொழுது அந்த செல்ஸ் வந்து ஒரு காகிதம் மாதிரின்னு வச்சுக்கோங்க அந்த காகிதம் வந்து கசங்க வாரி சுருங்கும் அப்போ விழித்திரையும் கசங்கும் கசங்கும் பொழுது உங்களுடைய நேர்கோடுகள்லாம் வளை வளைவா தெரியும் உங்களுக்கு பார்வை குறைபாடு ஏற்படும் இன்னொரு பிரச்சனை வந்து வயதுனால கண்ணில் வந்து ஒரு சின்ன ஓட்டை விடலாம் அந்த மைய பகுதியில் நல்லா இருக்க வேண்டிய பகுதியில் ஓட்டை விழும் ஓட்டை விழுந்தா பார்வையிலையும் ஒரு ஓட்டை விழும் இது வந்து வயது மட்டும் இல்லாம அடிப்பட்டா நடக்கலாம் இல்ல நிறைய இந்த மைனஸ் பவர் இருக்கவங்க நிறைய பேருக்கு இது மாதிரி வரலாம் ஆப்ரேஷன் பண்ணா வரலாம் சோ இதுக்கு வந்து ஆப்ரேஷன் என்ன பண்ண ரெண்டுக்குமே வந்து அந்த மெம்பிரேன் அப்படின்னு சொல்றோம் இல்லையா அதை வந்து ரிமூவ் பண்ணும் உள்ள கண் உள்ள போயிட்டு அந்த மெம்பிரேனை ரிமூவ் பண்ணி ஆப்ரேஷன் பண்ணுவோம் ஸோ இது பார்த்தீங்கன்னா ஆப்ரேஷனுக்கு முன்னால அந்த இந்த விழியோடைய மையப்பகுதி வந்து இப்படி இதா இருக்கு ஆப்ரேஷனுக்கு அப்புறம் நல்லா திருப்பி சீர ஆரம்பிச்சிருது அதே மாதிரி இந்த ஹோல் ஆப்ரேஷனுக்கு அப்புறம் கம்ப்ளீட்டா க்ளோஸ் பண்ண முடியும் அடுத்த பிரச்சனை வந்து உடம்புல இருக்க மற்ற மருத்துவ உபாய உபாதைகளால வரலாம் முக்கியமான காரணம் வந்து டயபெட்டிஸ் அதாவது சிங்கப்பூர்ல வந்து இப்போ டயபெட்டிஸ்ங்கிறது ரொம்ப ரொம்ப ஜாஸ்தி ஆகிட்டே போகுது டயபெட்டிஸ் இருக்கவங்களுக்கு மூணு பேர்ல ஒருத்தருக்கு கண் வியாதி வரலாம் கண் வியாதினா என்ன சொல்றதுன்னா கண் வியாதி கண் கம்ப்ளீட்டா கண் பார்வை இல்லாம போறது கூட வாய்ப்பு இருக்கு முக்கியமா ரெண்டுங்க ஒண்ணு வந்து கண்ணுக்குள்ள இருக்க அந்த மைய பகுதியில வீக்கம் வரலாம் இல்லைன்னா கண்ணுக்குள்ள ரத்த கசிவு வரலாம் ஆனா வீக்கம் வரும்பொழுது இந்த நடு நரம்பு கம்ப்ளீட்டா வீங்கிடும் இந்த மாதிரி நிறைய நீர் கோத்துக்கும் ஸோ இதுக்கு வந்து வைத்தியம் பண்றது லேசர் பண்ண முடியும் இல்லைன்னா இன்ஜெக்ஷன் பண்ண முடியும் இன்னொன்னு அடுத்த பிரச்சனை ஹை பிளட் ப்ரெஷர் வரும்பொழுது ரத்த நாணங்கள்லாம் வந்து பிளாக் ஆகிடும் பிளாக் ஆகும்போது ரத்த கசிவும் நீர் கசிவும் அந்த நடு நரம்புல நீர் தேக்கமும் ஏற்படும் அதுக்கும் திருப்பி வைத்தியம் வந்து லேசர் பண்றது இல்லைன்னா இன்ஜெக்ஷன் கொடுக்குற மாதிரி பண்ணலாம் ஸோ இன்ஜெக்ஷன் அப்படிங்கும் போது எல்லாருக்குமே ஒரு சின்ன பயம் வரும் கண்ணில் போய் ஊசி கொடுத்துறதா அப்படின்னு ஆனால் முக்கியமாக அது பயம்தான் 
கையில் கொடுக்குற ஊசியோட கண்ணில் கொடுக்குற ஊசியில் வலி கம்மியாக இருக்கும் ஒரு தடவை பண்ணிட்டாங்கன்னா அதுக்கப்புறம் யாரும் பயப்படுறது இல்லை மயோப்பியா கண்ணுடைய அந்த லெங்க்த் வந்து ஜாஸ்தியாக இருக்கிறதுனால நிறைய பேர் இந்த மைனஸ் பவர் போட்டிருக்கவங்க ஆறு டயாப்டருக்கு மேலே போடுறாங்களே அறநூறு டிகிரிக்கு மேலே போடுறவங்களுக்கு கண் நரம்பு நடு நரம்பில் ரத்த கசிவு ஏற்படலாம் ஸோ இதெல்லாம் எப்படி நம்ம தடுக்க முடியும் ஒரே வழி சீக்கிரம் நம்ம அவங்க பார்த்து சீக்கிரம் சிகிச்சை ஆரம்பித்தோம்னா கம்ப்ளீட்டாக எல்லாரையும் குணப்படுத்திடலாம் நன்றிங்க ரொம்ப நன்றி Thank you, Dr. Mahesh. Thanks, everyone. I think that makes the end of our public forums. Uh, we do try to address all your questions, uh, but because the limitation of time, sorry that uh, some of the questions might be missed. You are very welcome to visit our uh, KDPH website and the Facebook page. Okay, the event will be posted on Facebook. Uh, yeah. If you want to rewind, okay, some of the lectures. Okay, and if you have uh, some other questions. Thank you very much, everyone. Wish you a very uh, nice weekend ahead. Bye-bye. Bye, thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you, everyone. Bye bye.